Capital One's presentation of ESPN Bowl Week. The 45th AXA Liberty Bowl pits the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi against the 25th ranked Utes of Utah, all dressed up and ready to go in Memphis, a melting pot of Delta Blues, jazz, rock and roll, and gospel. But first, as a tumultuous year plays its final tune, we celebrate the men and women who ensure the nation's safety and consequently, its liberty. the Liberty Bowl from Memphis one of only three bowls that match conference champions this year Southern Miss undefeated winners of Conference USA going for their 10th win 25th ranked Utah only one loss year in taking the Mountain West Conference 2003 title and on what may be a 60 degree day that's about 50 degrees warmer than usual welcome Dave Barnett Bill Curry how did these two get here? Because it was very much in doubt in both cases early in the season. Early in the season it was, but what a surge by the University of Southern Mississippi. And here's who they are. One of only 10 teams in America to have had winning seasons in each of the last 10 years. Headed by Jeff Bauer now in his 13th year as the head coach. He's a Southern Mississippi lifer, having been a player, assistant, and head coach there for a long, long time. They are so happy to be here. Jeff says being in the Liberty Bowl means everything to Southern Mississippi. On the other side of the field, the Utah Utes, perhaps the least known of the rated teams, ranked 25th in the nation under first-year head coach Urban Meyer. A year ago, Coach of the Year in the MAC Conference. This year, Coach of the Year in the Mountain West. These guys make their living on field position and special teams. You'll see extra attention to their kickoff return unit, which leads the nation with 28.2 yards per return. I think this is a marvelous matchup of real football minds, Dave. Urban Meyer not yet born. In fact, he would not be born for seven years the last time Utah won an outright conference championship. Southern this year because they got some offense straightened out to go with their top nine. Bowl week. Across America, it is the season to celebrate college football. From city to city, the passion is unrivaled. Coast to coast and beyond, the nation comes alive for Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome again. Gorgeous day. Last day of 2003 as we ring in the 45th annual AXA Liberty Bowl Southern Miss against number 25 Utah. Happy New Year down on the sidelines to Heather Cox. And Dave, same to you. The Southern Miss players and coaches can all point to one defining moment that changed the course of their season. After starting three and three and rotating three different quarterbacks, Southern Miss put the offense in the hands of quarterback Dustin Almond, And the change was dramatic. During the three and three start the Eagles averaged just 13 points after the change the Southern Miss offense put up an uncanny 21 more points per game finishing with a perfect 6 and 0 mark and coach Bauer credits the staff's ability to develop chemistry and create confidence during that slow start and said this is the best coaching job this staff has done in 13 years that he's been a head coach at Southern Miss. Bill that was a heck of an off week. Yes a little bit of spring practice and he got with the troops and the Got him straight now, Coach Rip Shear running the offense, and of course the outstanding young defensive coordinator Tyrone Nix on the other side of the ball. They went best on best, and they got back to fundamentals, and that's how they played in the last six games. Utah has won the toss. They defer, and the nation's number four kick returner John Eubanks is deep for Southern Miss. Brian Borson has our game underway, and from the one-yard line, Eubanks. Averages 30 per return. They have him bottled up inside the 15 and only 13 on this return. Southern Miss 
finally settled on Dustin Allman, and from that point, they were a different team. 6-0 and since they lost to Nebraska and went to Allman as their starter at quarterback. From Orange Park, Florida, emulates Brett Favre. Used to emulate him off the field. That was something they had to get straightened out. His offensive coordinator, Rip Shear, former head coach here at Memphis, says they, they used to have a lot of 5.30 a.m. conversations. And Dustin finally got tired of that and decided to clean up his off-the-field out. On a kicking team, five-yard penalty. Our Pac-10 officiating crew says Utah will have to try and match that great kick coverage again. And you really don't like to see that as a head coach. You got a guy that averages 30 yards a return. Both these teams are superb on special teams. That's another thing Southern Mississippi had to straighten out after the early part of the year day. But you don't want to kick off again from your 30 yard line and give them a chance to get field position. Field position is going to determine this game according to Urban Meyer. He told us that in our meeting. Both teams excel at this. We said Eubanks fourth best in the country. Their punt returner Marvin Young eighth best in the country. And Utah, when they get a chance to return it, the best in the nation at kick returns. But again, they'll have to back up, kick this one from the 30. Eubanks and Young, very dangerous. Utah, really whoever is back there is dangerous. Both teams trying to win 10 games to match school records. Utah 10 wins early in the Ron McBride era. Their first outright conference title since 57. And Eubanks returns this one way past where he would have been. Breaks one tackle. And the Golden Eagles will start from the 26-yard line. So in addition to Allman, here's how the rest of the Southern Miss offense will line up. Marvin Young has had a touchdown in every game of their six-game winning streak, seven touchdowns all told. Big key to their season, moving Harris from fullback to the feature back spot. And another big move was Chris White moving from the left guard to the left tackle spot. Not the biggest guy in the world, but marvelous quickness and feet. Golden Eagles with a play fake on first down and Allman throwing incomplete. That one intended for Antoine Currington. The Utah defense, fourth best in the Mountain West Conference this year. And up front, they feature first team all Mountain West selection, defensive end Josh Savage from Salt Lake City. And in the middle, at the linebacker spot, Ray Holcraft. Urban Meyer says, you're not supposed to have favorite players. I got one, it's Holcraft. Scally, one of the keys to their defense, played at BYU five days after knee surgery. Academic All-America. All on second 10 of the first running play. Anthony Harris tries to stretch the defense, cut back, and barely makes the line of scrimmage. So the Golden Eagles looking at third, a little bit more than 10. Defense gets nice penetration here. Really not much running room. Harris turns it up inside, and you see eight red shirts around him and that's what the defensive coordinator Kyle Whittingham demands of his men and they've led the Mountain West Conference in defense for the last five years. And today the red line shows where third down starts yellow line where they have to get no chance here as breaking off the pattern Kenneth Johnson is a good 10 yards away from where that ball ended up. Not a good start for Southern Mississippi on defense on offense they really didn't look coordinated between their routes and their passes on either throw and didn't get much done up front on the run. So Luke Johnson on the punted away for the Golden Eagles. Former walk-on and ordained minister who has had four kicks blocked this year. Averages a shade under 42 yards per kick. Eight total kicks blocked against Southern Miss. It's a problem they feel they finally have straightened out. But they almost get this one, and it's a shank out of bounds near midfield. Parker back at the line of scrimmage. We got a flag there, Dave, but number 22, Bo Nagahi. Bo knows special teams. And they worked for 30 minutes in practice day before yesterday just to get him clean.
They've got several different rushes with design schemes to get Nagahi to the punter. They mark this punt out at the 43. It's an 18-yard punt, depending on how this conversation turns out. They're very fortunate that it went 18 yards, too, because Nagahi almost took it off his foot. They're going to call holding on Utah, and that may be part of the scheme. That may be a part of the problem in what they're doing to get him clean is to grab and pull somebody. We'll have to see right in this area. You'll see Nagahi coming from here. He moves all over the lot, and that's the hold. Yes. Part of the scheme was to grab and pull the blocker inside. That's a violation and a very alert call. Still won't give them the first down because they had the lost yardage on the running play. So they'll have to punt the ball, but they'll have 10 yards of field position. When we talk about field position, the reason it's so important, people don't understand. When you start in the other guy's territory, the odds on you scoring are incredibly high much higher than when you start on your own end of the field. So we'll see what the net effect of this penalty is. Well, they, they were ready to take over at the Southernness 43. Better effort. There's Warren on a hop and out of bounds at the 29 yard line. So that is in effect a 28 yard penalty, a 43 yard kick by Johnson. Quickly there, it was very alert by Paris Warren to keep that ball from rolling. And that's field position training. Had he not fielded that ball, that thing could have run down to the five-yard line. Alex Smith is the nephew of Michigan State head coach John L. Smith. Thought about playing for him at Louisville, but Uncle John said, well, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be at Louisville. So Alex decided to go to Utah, an amazing student. He is ready to graduate in May after two, two years, years of college with an economics degree. He will barely be 20 years of age when he starts working on his MBA, his last two years of eligibility. And right to the air out of the shotgun, and it's caught at the 37-yard line. A good start on first down in Paris Warren, the junior from Sacramento. First team, all Mountain West with a 72nd catch of the year. Watch number eight, Ben Moa. You will see him literally all over the field. He lines up at tight end. He's an H-back. He's a running back. He's even thrown a pass for a two-point play this year against Air Force. One catch for Paris Warren. One more and he ties their single season record. Ben Moa will be somebody to watch wherever he lines up. Tight end running back motion here and the give on the ground is to Brandon Warfield. The one true running back they have healthy here today and he's got a first down at the 40. Utah's offensive line features Guy that Southern Miss thought they had signed up, Thomas Harrion, Fort Worth, Texas, originally signed with Southern Miss. His mom refused to sign that letter of intent. He really wanted to go to Utah, he says, all along. And the Southern Miss defense up front, roughing the strongest in Golden Eagle history, a 470 bench press. Rod Davis now has more tackles than anybody in Southern Miss history. He came in tied for that all-time record. Over the middle, and at the 45-yard line, Travis Latondres with his first catch of the day. Junior from El Dorado Hills, California. If you ask Rod Davis who the best player is on defense, he'll say, I stole it from Bowley. Bowley's our best linebacker. Rod Davis showing characteristic humility, but he thinks Bowley's a better pass rusher and maybe a little better athlete than he is. Pruitt and Brooks, both first team all-conference selections. Davis Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. That's the man he says should have won the award. His teammate Michael Bowler. Second down and five for the Utes on their first possession. And a fake out of the gun and looking long, deep overthrown, intended for Moa. First time they try and hook up with him. One Good of the coach. most interesting stories in college football, and it's going to take a while to cover the whole thing. He used to be known as Ben Allison. He's changed a lot more than just his surname. He's changed his heart and his behavior, his wife, his son, his religion. Yes, it's a long story, but 
Ben's out here being productive, and uh, what a player he is. He carries a memento from his former life, a bullet in his back. Obviously, those that heard him on the field. Third down and five, Utah. They go empty backfield. And Smith bobbles the snap. Still loose, and the Golden Eagles recover at the 35 of Utah. Seth Cumby with the recovery for Southern Mississippi. Well, what we've got here is a vintage Tyrone Knicks defense. The superb young defensive coordinator because there are Golden Eagles all over the lot. Very difficult alignment to pick up. Eric Scott, number 92, is in the backfield and on the football like a duck on a June bug. And the brilliant young quarterback has made his first physical error. He simply was distracted, I think, by looking at the defensive front rather than catching the ball. First break is a huge one for the Golden Eagles. 36 of the use they take over. They go Harris on the ground, breaks one tackle, breaks two. Almost with a first down. Anthony Harris recruited as a hybrid. Not really sure whether he was a fullback or a running back. They're sure now. They're leading rusher with better than 600 yards, seven touchdowns, and 4.2 for care. Well, when they went that back to that, <laughs> that basic time during the off week, he had been a fullback. He said, let me try it over there at running back, coach. I think I can do that. Through quarterback open, running back open, a number of other positions open on the offense. They said, we have got to help our defense. Our defense can't win every single game for us. This is the fullback, redshirt freshman Wayne Hardy, stuff for no game, maybe a loss. Coach Rip Shearer really likes Wayne Hardy as a runner, and they'll hand it to him on that little fullback role play, but the guys up front have got to do their part. Steve Fafita, number 94, again, too much penetration allowed. Fafita got his pads down, simply escaped the block, Nice job. Good tackle by the D line. High and two tight ends on third and two. And then will come close. Harris for another loss. And you see why Holcraft is the head coach's favorite player. Those middle linebackers that flow sideline to sideline are usually pretty popular with the head man. This is one you can just listen to. That's how it feels. Hey, Holcraft for a loss of two. And this will be a 47 yard field goal drive. Kick by Darren McCaleb has no chance. He had only missed two all year. They were both blocked. He was 14 of 16 before that one. And Southern Miss cannot cash in the game's first turnover in the AXA Liberty Bowl. don't have to drive more than maybe five minutes through Memphis, any part of Memphis, before you are reminded whose hometown this was. That I'm not sure I would agree with. <laughs> there were no natural ties between Elvis Presley and the University of Utah that we are aware of. Utah feels like there maybe. should have been a lot more notice for their conference champion rather than just three first-team all Mountain West selections. They did have the coach of the year, but they thought a lot more players deserve more honors, and they carry that sentiment with them into this Acts of Liberty Bowl. Brandon Warfield barely passed the line of scrimmage after Utah, with the game's first turnover, sees Southern Miss Miss badly on a field goal, and so we are still scoreless. 9-24 and counting the first quarter from Memphis. Alex Smith, when you go back to high school, and he is the son of his high school principal, Doug. It's John L's brother. Helix High School and Utah. 33 wins, two losses as a starting quarterback. Felix High, also a famous alum, Bill Walton. 
in the San Diego area. This pass deflected, still caught for a short gain at the 33-yard line by Paris Warren, who alertly pulls down his 73rd catch of the year, and that ties the school record. Terrell Paul, one of the better pass rushers in the history of the USM, University of Southern Mississippi. Nice job of getting his hands up. He was clean there, and that's not good for the protection for Utah. It doesn't bode well for their scheme. Warren tying Lauren Ritchie from 85, Dennis Smith from 89. 73 catches this year. But a third and seven. They blitz Smith. They got him inside the 25-yard line. And not much problem for Rod Davis to get through the three-time All-America linebacker. Unlike Rod Davis's prediction, he told us yesterday in our visits with him, what you're going to see in bowl games is a lot of missed tackles. So we've worked hard on our fundamentals. Watch him square up. Not only does he come clean, but he hits the elusive quarterback right in the middle. Now here's an unusual formation. Let's see if we get something funny. The one man left of the center, Matt Kovakovich, gets off a sideways bounce. And Southern Miss got a great field position to work with around the 47 yard line. The other thing that happens in bowl preparation is that bright coaches outsmart themselves with fancy formations and get their punter distracted. No one has ever had more tackles for some of this or in Conference USA than Rod Davis. Add another one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 AXA Liberty Bowl. Presented by AXA. Your future, your way. And in part by the Chrysler PT Cruiser. Customize your life. And by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Lots more where this came from. A full day of Capital One Bowl Week action continuing. Two more games tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. 7.30 Eastern, Cedric Cobbs, Matt Jones in Arkansas against Missouri. In the mainstay, Independence Bowl on ESPN. And on ESPN2 at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, Bradley Van Pelt and the Colorado State Rams take on Derek Knight, the Boston College Golden Eagles and the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. We're in the Axe of Liberty Bowl. Southern Miss champions of Conference USA, Utah champions of the Mountain West. With Heather Cox, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, 726 of the first scoreless. And Allman, after the play fake, decides to keep plenty of room. Dustin Allman out of bounds at the 37 yard line with a first down and a gain of 16. Dangerous runner who has three rushing touchdowns and can really run the option at times. The reason we're here is because of creative defense. Take a look right here, 24, Rod Davis, the great middle linebacker, starts up inside and then darts to the outside like a good running back. The uncovered lineman, Chris Kimiatu, had no chance to get out and pick him up. Back to Anthony Harris and a good push on first down to the 29. And a gain of seven for the sophomore from Demopolis, Alabama. You watch a running back coming from exactly the same direction, at least in terms of our camera, he does exactly the same thing. He finds the open space and then hits it, and it's the explosiveness that makes for the great player, Rod Davis, Anthony Harris, respectively. Sacks a big problem early for Utah. So the miss started to establish a running game, although no gain here. Harris is stuffed, and let's check into the studio with Reese Davis. All right, Dave, earlier this afternoon, not too far away from where you guys are, just down the road a couple hours or so, Wisconsin and Auburn and Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. Cadillac went into the end zone twice, so too did Ronnie Brown. Auburn beats Wisconsin 28-14. Auburn in Nashville here in Memphis, Southern Miss and Utah School. It's a third and four after the loss on second down for Harris. Two tight ends. Only one of the backfield, and he's showing perhaps a secondary blitz. Auburn checks to the short drop. 
And incomplete, and even if Marvin Young makes that catch, he's nowhere near the first. Utah is a man coverage team, and they're lining up with their corners, just daring Southern Mississippi to throw the football into the man coverage. So far, so good for Utah. Southern Miss is going to go for it here. Well, they've already missed one field goal, which would come from right about the same distance. This comes the worst. They turn it over to Utah, 70 yards away. Allman in the gut on fourth and four. Utah with the blitz. Pass way behind Young. Young turned in. Ball was thrown outside. I don't think, though, I don't think it's a bad decision because of how short the first field goal try was. That's normally four down territory. And if you got confidence in your quarterback that he can make the little outcut throw, then you throw it. And you count on making those first downs. But Morgan Scally got there too quick. There's a free safety from Utah that's excellent in coverage. Former running back came clean and hit the quarterback, Dustin Allen, before he could get the ball off. So he hit 70 yards away. Northfield went in motion. Smith, he thinks, and a game of about three. Davis, another tackle, helped up by Alex Ray. One thing that will probably shock you, if you're not aware of the Southern Miss defense through the last five years or so, since 1999, it's not even close. They have far and away the fewest touchdowns allowed in the country. They have a wonderful defensive tradition. Excellent defensive coordinators, and when Tyrone Nix took over, he was the youngest defensive coordinator in America. I don't know if he still is. He tells me he's aged him a lot <laughs> the last couple of years. He is a nominee for the Frank Royals Award for the top assistant in the country. Warfield with some room. Warfield near midfield with a first down for Utah and a gain of 16 yards. Tyrone had a couple of things he felt like had to be done. He had to stop the zone and the option. They ran the option two plays ago, and it was defensed well, but the zone play was not. He wants to make Alex Smith throw the football, and so far, Utah is having their way on this drive with the running game. And the Utes strive for balance, and they strive first to get the running game going. You still tend to think of Mountain West teams, former WAC teams, as pass, pass, pass all the time. Not true here. Warfield, another big hole, and another first down. Here comes the flag from way behind the line of scrimmage. Referee threw this one after a gain of 13. Now, when you got the big rep, and you got the big number on your chest, you also have a large target on your chest. And here's what they're going to do to you. Chris Kamiatu, number 68, is a 300-pounder. He's all over Rod Davis. Driving, driving, Davis trying to get off, but he finds himself being driven back up the field. Excellent blocking that time. Kimiatu got the best the of it. Spot. Still first down. And here's what Urban Meyer and his coaching staff does not want to see. Mike Sanford, offensive coordinator with a Southern California background, having played for John Robinson, loves the power running game, and you kill yourself with those holding penalties. So instead of being well in the Golden Eagle territory, first and 20 back well into their own at their 39-yard line. Utah's worst scoring quarter is the first. A little better as things go on. By far their best scoring quarter is the fourth. Moa went in motion. They shovel it underneath to him. A couple of tackles gets to the 46. We get it down to Heather Cox. Some notes from the Utah bench. The receivers and quarterbacks spent the last series brainstorming on why the offense had been stagnant so far. The coaches told Alex Smith and Steve Savoy that they're going to empty it out, try and hit some quick stuff early, then loosen up the Southern Miss defense, then try and go over the top, guys. Mike Sanford, offensive coordinator last year with Stanford. Spent some time on uh, Bob Davies' Notre Dame staff with Urban Meyer in the late 90s. Take it down 13, gain of seven by Moe. He's been around everywhere. He was in motion. Smith. 
On the scramble, now looks up, just throws it away. Hard time getting away from Ronald Jones, the sack leader for the Golden Eagles, and we have another marker. Begin to see why Michael Boley is so highly regarded by his star teammate, Rod Davis. When you saw Alex Smith, they got a lineman illegally downfield. Sometime when you throw the ball away and you throw it beyond the line of scrimmage, the lineman didn't know that he was going to do that, and they were downfield blocking for the screen. The reason the screen wasn't thrown is because Michael Boley sniffed it so quickly, he just ran out and stood Penals between the quarterback field. and his receiver. Offense, that penalty's declined. Third down. Heather, what were your impressions of Michael Bowden? Well, what's interesting about them is the relationship that he has with his brother. Liberty is definitely has a special meaning for the two of them. They took different paths to today's bowl game. Michael was very highly recruited, earned a scholarship to Southern Miss. His brother Ken wanted to play with his brother, but knew he couldn't afford to pay his way. So he decided to join the Army, and as he says, so they could pay for it. He has since fought in the war in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom. He is now a walk on fulfilling that dream of playing with his Michael brother, or his brother Michael, really a, a, the true message of the Liberty Bowl today, guys. But that is dedication. That is one of the longest routes to college football you, you will ever hear. Third and 13. They need the 41 of Southern Miss. Southern Miss has one player in a three-point stance. And sacked again at the 38-yard line. Ronald Jones is fifth of the year. That leads the Golden Eagles. For whatever it's worth, that's the guy that was in a three-point stance. They had 10 players standing up. We always just call that a radar defense because you don't know where they're going to end up. John Thompson, now head coach at East Carolina, popularized this look. There comes Ronald Jones, number 90. He is the only guy on the field in a white shirt that was in a three-point stance, and he came clean on the blitz. Leads the defensive line of the Golden Eagles with their fifth. Bowley leads overall with 10 sacks. Utah's running all over the place in punt formation. Trying to make them think. Kovakovic gets off a big one. And Marvin Young fair caught it at the 13. A 48-yarder, which the number eight punt returner in the country can do nothing with. 223 in the first here in Memphis, Southern Miss and Utah are scoreless in the Axa Liberty Bowl. Two twenty-three, the first, and the Southern Miss defense with Kenneth Bowley and the, the circuitous route that Heather recounted before he made his way to Hattiesburg, joined his brother Michael, here to enjoy their status as Conference USA champions. And since Conference USA came to being 1996, this is the dominant program. They have taken half the titles in the eight-year history of Conference USA. Up to the good punt from the 13, and a marker down as Marvin Young goes end around and picks up about five, but that was before the flag was thrown prior to the snap. Number 96, Tavita Kimiatu, offsides, moving before the ball snap. Constantly harp at the defensive lineman. Watch the football. Do not get caught up in the snap count. 1996 Conference USA came into being. This is the dominant program, Southern Miss, and, and they have done it until the last year with what every coach in the league would have to agree is. Offside defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Less in terms of facilities of anyone. In fact, the coaches were telling Jeff Bauer, you're ruining it for it. We, we try and get new locker rooms, <laughs> yeah. new weight room, and everybody says, well, what about Jeff Bauer? He wins the league every year. He has the worst facilities in the league. Well, that's finally basement, no longer true. The basement of the dormitories is where it was. No longer the case. They have a major upgrade there now at Hattiesburg. So first and five, Alvin, as he tries to turn it up, knocked off his feet. Marquez Ledbetter, the defensive end. Thursday morning. 
Capital One Bowl week continues on ESPN at 11 a.m. Eastern. Two of the top 17 teams in the country meet in the Outback Bowl in Tampa. Kurt Ferentz, Iowa Hawkeyes, C.J. Leak and the Florida Gators on New Year's Day. Our coverage begins with College Game Day built by Home Depot at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. No gain, and so second and five. Final minute 20 of the first quarter. running out of time and room and then turns it up and out of bounds near the first down at about 22 and a half and maybe a foot or so short. Really good penetration there by Steve Fafita just knocking back a Darrell Edwards number 67. Josh Savage also in there. Southern Mississippi offense is yet to get untracked and get into any kind of rhythm. Rip Shearer had certain plays that he wanted to exploit. He had a sort of six series of six plays each that he wanted to look at early, but they haven't been well coordinated up to this point. At least not to his satisfaction, I can assure you. On third and a foot, give to the fullback Wayne Hardy. And Hardy across that yellow line for the first down. It carried only three times all year before today and a couple of times already here in the first quarter. Golden Eagles have some trickery for Utah. They like to be creative on third and short, fourth and short. But in this case, they really needed that first down and very wise just to hand it to the fullback. So inside the final minute of the first. Southern Miss from their 23. And Allman all day on the play fake. Finally a strike. Hardy again. And to the 30. And again of about seven. When we talk about rhythm, we're talking about coordination between the offensive line, the play action in this case, and the quarterback and the receiver. It was all there. Southern Mississippi starting to resemble the offense that played so very well the last six games when they were undefeated. And there's no comparison to the team that played the first six, split those. They improved by about 22 points and 109 yards per game in those last six all wins. Might not get this snap off, and they don't before the first quarter comes to an end. Coach Bauer very lavish with his praise for Rip Shearer for keeping good cohesiveness and good chemistry on the offensive side of the ball when they were going through the hard time. Good to see defense in a bowl. We're seeing at a total of 65 yards combined by Southern Miss and Utah in the first quarter of the AXA Liberty Bowl. In and doubt, hear them shout, counter march and run about, and our caissons come rolling along. And it's high, high, he in the field are. Oh, I bet you didn't know Sybil Shepherd was a songstress. In addition to actress, Memphis's own Sybil Shepherd entertaining before kickoff. Sang the songs of all four branches of the armed service. All four. When, when, when I was a kid, we used to sing those in uh, in our chorus when I went to a military school, Georgia Military Academy. That brought back a lot of memories. Did you sound that good? Uh, we didn't sound. Did you look that good? Didn't look that good or sound that good, no, but we were earnest. So the second quarter starts. Allman incomplete. Really well designed play, but the pass too tall. And uh, still very little in the way of consistent offense for either team. The intended receiver, Patrick Corbett, and third and three coming for Southern Miss. Well, Alma's just having an accuracy problem. He's had, there have been some protection problems. He's been, he's been hit a little, but then he has a chance right there to make an easy completion, and uh, he just overthrows. Kyle yep. Whittingham took the worst of that. Defensive coordinator. Allman on third down. Another one too tall. Incomplete. Off 
the hand of Anthony Kieron. Just two catches for the true freshman out of Loosedale, Mississippi coming in. Might as well have caught that one because he was going to get blasted either way. Yeah, Whittingham, that's, that sideline's a dangerous place, and when you see those big guys coming your way, the back pedal is something that uh, I learned to do very well, Dave. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle may have a, a little uh, injury there. I hope not. Neither quarterback has got any rhythm or accuracy so far. You have to hope if, if you're the offensive coaches on each team that that just comes with time. Just got to calm down. False start call as Southern Miss tried to line up for the punt. So now on fourth and nine, Luke Johnson will try again. Into the win, and a good one. Chasing Warren back to his 26-yard line. Warren fights hard for a return of five. After a broken tackle, a 48-yard punt. Wind actually turning around now, and depends on which end zone you look at it in the right end zone looks like you punted against it in the left end zone looked like when you get down there the punt was with the wind so it's just swirling around the Liberty Bowl and another marker down for holding yeah this is on Michael Bowley our outstanding linebacker number 27 who's on the punt team holding number 41 Grady Marshall Utah has seen some things and they really believe they can block a punt in this game like I said they worked on it for a long, long time. Day before yesterday, they had Nagahi clean the first time. Holy he almost got a piece offense. of it. Ten yards from the previous spot. Still fourth down. You talk about things that keep head coaches awake at night. You lie awake at night thinking about whether or not we can protect this punter. And bowl games are times when you see more special teams errors than at any other time other than the first game of the year when you start to fall. All right, now from that shot, you would think that this punt is going into the wind. That's just depending on which flag you look at. At the other end of the field, looks like it's going with the wind. It's another really good effort. And inside the 31. First man misses, Paris Warren near midfield, the 47-yard line in Utah after a 56-yard punt is in good shape. A return of 19. I guess the end result is pay no attention to any flags. It's just swirling everywhere. It was scoreless early in the second in Memphis. First meeting ever between Southern Miss and Utah. And we're scoreless early in the second quarter. Let's go, Utah! Yeah! Let's go, Their ESPN game track in this Axe of Liberty Bowl. Didn't take but one tackle for Rod Davis to set the all-time Southern Miss and Conference USA career tackle record. He already had the conference mark. That's the only turnover on a fumbled snap by Alex Smith, although Southern Miss could do nothing with it. Still a total of only 65 yards, 40 by the Golden Eagles, 25 yards by the Utah offense, three rushing, 22 passing. That's it. And a much better field position. They're on 48-yard line. They motion Moa. And give to Warfield, and he's cut down by Terrell Paul for a loss. Whatever Utah does, it never seems to surprise the Southern Miss defenders. No, and one thing that Tyrone Nix does is when they line up, we talk about the exotic defenses. That time they're lined up in nothing but an old wide tackle six, two inside linebackers responsible for the A-gaps. You can see it the way it's lined up across the field. Six defenders up front with their hands on the ground, two linebackers. Quick penetration because there are just too many tacklers. Eight tacklers for seven blockers. It's a numbers game. And another loss. Loss of two, second and 12. Remember, his goal is to get them into having to throw the football. And we'll have our first timeout called by Utah. 13.36 to go early in the second quarter. Nothing, nothing in Memphis of the Axe of Liberty Bowl.
Looking all good for the camera, the Southern Miss mascot. Meanwhile, uh, engrossed in the game, the Utah mascot. All business. Signaling officially the ball ready for play. And a second and 12 for the Utah offense. Yet to get anything going at all. Warfield, a little room around the left side, and Brandon Warfield out of bounds at the 36-yard line, and one of their best games of the day is 18 yards. We talk about Ben Moa being a factor in the game, and the fact that he does everything, he comes in motion as an H-back here and actually performs as a trap blocker on an inside defensive lineman and just got a devastating block. He doesn't look like he's 260 pounds, but that's what he is. Watch him come down inside. Here he comes. He's going to go boom right here. Defensive lineman on the ground. Boom right there. Chad Ruffin still trying to figure out where that guy come from. First down from the Southern Miss 36, and Smith can keep for big yardage. They'll mark him right at the first down marker. Alex Smith talked about the fact that his dad was a high school principal, and he said, I was a senior. He had me taking seven advanced placement courses, and I, I, I didn't like it then, but I'm real happy about it now because I entered college as a junior. Yeah, that, that needed God, explaining. Really we just said he's... He's a sophomore, but he's going to graduate in May. That's how he did it. It's because of all the extra high school advanced placement classes, 11 of them all told. So he got rid of two years' worth of college work when he was still at Helix High. And the good news for the football team is so many times you'll have a scholarly sort who's brilliant in the classroom, but he doesn't bring him to the football field. And he actually can be a not very smart football player. In the case of Alex, he's a 4-0 student in both dimensions, according to his coaches. They play on Saturdays. He is back with the coaches on Sunday afternoons for six hours watching game takes. Getting ready for the next game. Did you ever have a player watch six hours worth of tape with you on a Sunday? I had some guys that didn't watch six hours in their career. We'll keep it up for the first. I continue with the 26 of the Golden Eagles. And again, Mullen went in motion. Smith keeping. And out of one broken tackle, they finally have him at the 18. And it took Michael Bowley to come up for the stop. I think it's important to note, too, that Alex was pretty candid with us when we met with him and said, I really don't handle, I don't like to make mistakes. It just kills me. I hate it. You'll see me holding my head. Well, he dropped a gun snap a while ago, and it's the only turnover in the game. And it's very interesting to see that he's come back out here and perform with poise, and he's now got his team in scoring position. They're in the red zone for the first time today. Hardest team to get an interception against in the country, Utah. Four all year. Smith has thrown two. Against 15 touchdowns, tied for the best ratio in the country for Texas's chance mock before the Bulls. Warfield pushing the pile near the 10. And we may have first and goal Utah. Full day, Capital One Bull Week continuing with our two games tonight, beginning at 7.30 Eastern as Arkansas meets Missouri in the Mainstay Independence Bowl on ESPN from Shreveport. And on ESPN 2, 10.30 Eastern from San Francisco as Colorado State takes on Boston College in the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Utah scores 81% of the time this year in the red zone, but only 64% touchdowns. Not as good a percentage as they would like. Not quite first and goal. It's first and 10 just outside the 10. They go Paris Warren in motion. And Warfield for a loss into the 14-yard line. Antoine Cash, along with Eric Scott on the tackle. A loss on the play of three yards. It is second down. Second Remember, this team has given up fewer touchdowns than any the last five years combined. Twelve fewer than the, the second best defenses over that period, Oklahoma and Miami. That's amazing. That is an amazing thing, an accomplishment for a team that does not recruit the same kind of athletes as those two other schools you just mentioned to play defense, but they play it with passion. And they don't play 
an all cupcake schedule either. Here's the second time out called by Utah. I mean, they, they play the Alabamas. They play wherever they can oh, get. They and play they play Nebraska. Yeah. Way less than half their games are at home, too. Second time out, 11 17. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 AXA Liberty Bowl. Brought to you by the next Ford F-150. 2004 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Wendy's Super Value Menu. The best 99 cents you can spend. And by FedEx. You can always rely on the ultimate in reliable shipping. Relax, it's FedEx. Best show in town, except for maybe B.B. King's place on Beale Street. The Peabody Hotel Ducks. They parade on that red carpet at 11. They leave again at 5. They go up and down the elevators. I don't know who trained them. I don't know whose idea it was. It's great entertainment. Southern Miss Hotel downtown. Second down and 12 after Utah. Second time out, 11-17 in the first half of the scoreless Axe of Liberty Bowl. But the youth with the best threat either team has enjoyed so far. Warfield. Trying to stretch back toward the 10 and a marker is down. You watch that tough defense. I'll tell you, the most impressive red zone statistic I have seen this year is the Southern Mississippi's defense inside their 20-yard line. Opponents have scored 31.6% of the time they've scored touchdowns. That is not very much. Holding Utah, they're going to make things even tougher on themselves. So that was second down and 12. Dave. There's a duck master for those ducks. There had to be. I, you they, told me I thought you knew just about everything. I knew they didn't just teach themselves. So no, there's a duck master. What's happened to the offense-dominated bulls? They need a they need a duck master or something. What? Yeah. <laughs> They're having trouble with these defenses, Dave. <laughs> these defenses are all over the place. Police. They can't block offense. Them. That penalty's declined. All right. Third down. <laughs> Defenses need a duck mask. <clears throat> well, it sounded good at the time. 2003 can't end soon enough. <laughs> can it? 104 total yards. They need to get just inside the one for a first down. They'd much rather get all 12 and get the touchdown on third down. Five wides. And under pressure, underthrown, intended for Travis Latondras at incomplete. There is a mode of thought that you get when you play defense as well as Southern Mississippi does. Pressure that time by Greg Brooks. You have such confidence when you get a call off the sideline, hey, we're going to get these guys stopped. We give up touchdowns less than a third of the time after people are inside our 20. That's an amazing stat. And that's a program attitude that you get when you play defense. And the best way to win football games is to keep people out of your end zone. Ryan Morrison for 29 yards and the lead and a problem on the snap. And finally stopped back at the 31-yard line by Antoine Cash. Long snapper number 58. Bless your heart, Brady Parkhurst. I did it for 20 years. They never call your name unless you throw it in an errant way. And this is a poor snap. Just got away from him, slipped out of his hands and rolled back. The holder couldn't hem it up. Did it. Holder did a great job of blocking Rod Davis. Tyrone loves it. They got zero points. Yeah, it's a bad feeling. Get over there and get some snaps on the sideline. Get yourself back together. That's all you can do. Still scoreless. Harris on the run. Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, take you down to El Paso. The Wells Fargo Sun Bowl, Minnesota and Oregon. Ducks up 17-14. This is Lawrence Maroney. He is loose, and he is going to set up a Thomas Tepe touchdown. Tepe has scored three times on this game, which, of course, Dave and Bill, would make him Oregon's duck master. 21-17 Minnesota. That's what it would make him. Very good, Bruce. 
complete breaking tackles, extra yardage. Deron Lawrence, his first catch goes for 16 yards. And very good news for Southern Mississippi because it looks like Dustin Allman has sort of got the moths out of his works and he's throwing the football on rhythm and throwing it with precision. For the first time today, he throws a nice curl and he hits the receiver right between the eight and the five, which is exactly what he wants to do. Deron Lawrence. Lawrence, former walk on. Fake to Young, gunning deep, almost intercepted, in and out of the hands of Arnold Parker. That was one of the gimmick plays that Southern Miss had in a fake reverse, nice protection. Arnold Parker is the cover guy, the best cover corner that Utah has. He was not fooled. He did not look in the backfield. He simply played the football, and the only thing he should have done that he didn't do was to come down with it. Arnold, that's an easy pluck, man. The fastest player had one of their biggest plays of the year, an 80-yard fumble return with a minute 33 to go to win the game against Colorado State, 28-21. Another carry for Wayne Hardy for the first time all year playing big into their game plan. He's now carried as many times today as he had all year coming in. Three. And it'll be third and nine. Could be, too, that Utah's having a bad hair day. Gracious. That's impressive. Tomasoa. Allman, it's picked up, fires complete, and then dropped it. It's incomplete. Antoine Currington unable to hang on. Morgan Scally there to knock it loose. Number 25, the free safety. Currington needs to cushion that ball. His hands bring it into the chest and put it away so that it can't be knocked out from the rear. Again, the defense is dominating. So Paris Warren will drop back to his 10. Luke Johnson will try him. Let him pin somewhere around there. But first, Southern Miss will call its first time out. Eight minutes and 47 seconds to go in the first half. Lou Rawls, love is a hurting thing. We'll talk to Heather when we come back to Memphis. Well, Southern Miss had called uh, its first time out and back ready to punt now with 8.47 to go in the half from their own 49. What was the reason for the timeout? Well, it, so that they could get in this formation which looks like it was drawn up by Duckmaster. They're all over the field. They got four out to the left, three out to the right. Now Rod Davis is gonna run back into the tackle spot. They're forcing Utah to deploy all over the field. I guess they're trying to keep them from working their regular block schemes. Will they come in tight to the top again? Well, Trick Pruitt finally went yep. in motion. And now, at last, we think they're ready to punch. Was almost clean. Well, Luke Johnson got way too much. And he will get a 51 that will net 31 with some musical masters down below Heather Cox. I'm joined by Lou Rawls, and you're uh, here to sing three David Porter songs at the halftime. Yes. Do you have any idea how excited the stadium is? Everywhere I go, they're uh, talking about you singing at halftime. Really? I didn't know that, but I'm excited to be here. It's really a great thing to have fun. Now, how much of a football fan are you, and do you have any oh. advice for these teams on how to get a little offense? Well, I don't have, I'm not one of those armchair quarterbacks, see. I just like the game. I love the game. <laughs> and so uh, when they asked me to come and be a part of this, I looked, jumped at the chance. It's a lot of fun there. Yeah. I would be remiss not to ask you, am I ever going to find another love like this? <laughs> you will never find <laughs> as long as you live someone who loves you tender like I do. Yeah, you will. <laughs> After hearing it from him,
him? I don't believe it, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure you will. All right. I like your hope. <laughs> Thank you. All right, it's great to be here. Oh, you. I refuse to talk now. I refuse to talk and follow that voice. Goosebumps just from hearing him talk, and when he starts to sing, brings back so many memories. What a wonderful artist Lou Rawls is. We hear from David Porter down there a little bit later. Another Stax Records legend from here in Memphis. Soul Man. On his hits, Sam and Dave. Warfield and bottled up. Falls forward in the arms of crew at maybe for a yard. And you got Lou Rawls and Dave Porter. Who needs us? Who needs football? Just hand them mics and let them go. Songwriting legend. So third and three for the Utah Utes, seven and a half, midway second quarter, and still no score. The last game we did, we saw 102 points and 1,100 yards in Honolulu. Here we have 115 yards total combined. No points. Alex Smith on the roll. Incomplete. And as bright as Alex Smith is, he's having great difficulty reading the coverage of this Southern Mississippi defense. There was no pressure then. He did not need to run, but he bolted out of the pocket when he could have stood in place, but he simply ended up with a coverage sack. Secondary is playing a marvelous football game. It is extremely difficult to throw the football on this Southern Mississippi defense. Four of eight for 22 yards. So the miss coming after Kavakovich. They don't get to him, but Utah will get a nice bounce out of this one and a roll inside the 30. Finally dead around the 27th. Forty-six thanks to the roll on the punt by Kavakovich. Six. 52 to go in the first half of a still scoreless Axel Liberty Bowl in Memphis. They didn't tell us that they've also got Miss America here today, but apparently there, there is some sort of pageant coming up. Well, they got Miss Everybody, it looks like. Southern Miss from their 27-yard line, 6.51 to go in the second quarter. Looking for room, Anthony Harris. When they have had to go to the air, absolutely nothing has gone right. Allman is 2 for 10 for 21 yards. Not a whole lot better. His counterpart for Utah. Smith, four for eight for 22 yards. Both quarterbacks are having great difficulty in recognizing coverage and then throwing it to the place that they want to throw it. A little rust. They hadn't played football in a long time. There's a completion, and Marvin Young hit in his tracks at the 30. Spencer Toon, number nine. Both these defenses have had a lot of time to scout the offensive thinking. They understand formation tendencies. Kyle Whittingham, the fine defensive coordinator, been at Utah for 10 years, and he was a holdover from the previous staff under Ron McBride, understands offensive football so well, and they've got, obviously, they've got this Southern Mississippi offense figured out so far. Not great during the year on third downs. Really bad today. Just one out of six, 34 percent. Your yearly figure converting third. All but chase by team. Ball is loose. Was it a pass? No. Fumble recovery by Utah at the 17-yard line. Lewis Powell. Free safety blitz. Morgan Scally again. That guy who just finds a way to be in the middle of everything. Coming from his free safety spot, he knocks the football loose. Number 25, Morgan Scally. Just relentless in pursuit. And it was a delayed blitz, which meant there was no pickup for him, which further meant if the ball were pulled down, if the ball were not thrown on rhythm, he was going to get there, and that he did. 
So you think now, surely, we're going to see some points. Maybe. Hardly a guarantee the way these defenses have played. Reverse. And room for Steve Savoy. Fights his way near the foul. And driven out by Ronald Jones. But you need to understand it's a calculated risk down here. Offensive coordinator Mike Sanford for Utah makes a nice call. If he gets a big blitz here, it's going to be a big loss. But he takes a chance on the reverse, and you see the fast flow defense. Everybody in the white shirt is on this side of the field. The ball is going away from the pursuit. And then a nice block out front. And then, but for a form tackle at the six yard line, it would have gone in the end zone. A lot of credit to Travis Coley over there, along with Jones, and it's first and goal from the five for Utah. And they will use their last timeout. Still 4.47 to go in the half. So Alex Smith over for a word, as Utah is poised to take a lead at last here in Memphis. Utah fans very well represented from Salt Lake City fought their way out of some snow to get here to Memphis to uh, really ideal day around 60 degrees and a chance to take the lead with 446 to go in the first half. We have a first and goal at the five. Remember how hard it is to score any year, any time against the Southern Miss defense going back to 1999. Also understand that teams have gotten inside the 20 that scored less than a third of the time meaning touchdowns and less than half the time have they scored any points at all against the Southern Miss defense. No more timeouts for the Utes. As Smith comes up under center. It's Moa in motion. It's the world here with a cutback. He still keeps his feet going for a touchdown. That's just great running by Brandon Warfield and some no, more fine blocking by Ben Moa and number 76, Thomas Harrion, the big left guard. Watch number eight. Not pretty, but effective. Warfield breaking tackle after tackle, just a determined run into the end zone. Extra point by Boris and Good, 7 nothing Utes. And the 11th touchdown run of the year for Brandon Warfield, the senior from Crockett, Texas. Let's check in in the studio with Reese. They perhaps offended that I referred to Thomas Tape as their duck master. Oregon's got a little something else for Minnesota, and it's Sammy Parker. He's been a masterful duck of his own, over 150 yards receiving already. Oregon back on top in the Wells Fargo Sumble. Wouldn't Mike Bellotti be the duck master? <laughs> I'm so sorry I said that. Well, you gotta live How did I know Reese was going to hear it, too? Another good look at marvelous running by Brendan Warfield. The play was not particularly well blocked. It was, it was well blocked at the corner by Moa, but not much going inside. He just made it happen much going for either team on the ground but what there is Warfield has for Utah second team all Mountain West the third leading rusher in the conference this year just under 100 yards per game and missed two of their last three because of knee surgery insisted on playing against BYU Harris return of 11 yards. Well, no matter which team you think is number one, the only place to see them play is on ABC. New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern, the most talked about bowl championship series in history begins as USC looks to prove their championship material against Michigan in the Rose Bowl game presented by City. Number three in the BCS, number one in both polls, but in the BCS standings behind both Oklahoma and LSU, who will play in the Nokia Sugar Bowl for that version of the national championship. USC beats Michigan. They will have the other version, the AP and the coaches poll. Voters, here's the weird thing, though. The coaches agree 
that their champion is the BCS champion, but their votes don't back that up. It's crazy. American Football Coaches Association, part of the agreement in the BCS, is that whoever wins the BCS championship bowl game is the national champ, even though they have voted USC number one. Well, what we voted, we being coaches, is that we would have uh, lived with the agreement that the BCS poll would be the final result of the coaches poll and everybody understood that before all this happened. Nobody could have anticipated there would be this kind of boondoggle and it will be corrected in time. This year we just got a real nice two game parlay with probably two national champs. It's so life will go on. It's a lot like last time there was split champs 97 with Memphis from uh, uh, Michigan and uh, Nebraska. Had the splits offsides, and so they got to kick it off again. It's the second time Utah's been called offsides for the kickoff, but oh, this time the receiving team was offsides. Wilson with a low bouncer. And They're just not going to give him one to return. Return by Terrell Broden, normally a tight end. A day for the defenses. Davis now the all-time Southern Miss tackling leader. Utah plenty of moments. They have held Dustin Allman to three of 11 for 21 yards along with that forced fumble. Seven nothing Utah on the five-yard scoring run by Brandon Warfield. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half of the Axe of Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Best pass yet perhaps by Allman and a first down catch or close to a first down now. They'll mark Kenneth Johnson a yard shy at the 40. Johnson a senior hoping to end his career with a win and perhaps move up the polls number 25 Utah champions of the Mountain West champions of Conference USA Southern Miss and as that shows you offense has been at a premium. Back to the ground game, and Anthony Harris fights hard for a yard. Only two bowl games other than this one matching conference champions. Rose Bowl is one, Pac-10 and Big Ten champs, USC and Michigan, and the Orange is the other, matching uh, Florida State winners of the ACC and Miami winners of the Big East. Third and very short here. This is a good place for Southern Miss to put it up. Take it into the line and see if you can get a quick six. Do that, they're going to have to beat Arnold Parker, number 17, if they throw it to the wideout. Going to be close. Wayne Hardy gets another carry and another marker at the line of scrimmage. They're just not getting a hat on the linebackers. Holcraft's having a field day. We got him unofficially for five tackles, but seems like he's got 25. Offsides defense. And maybe one reason they were pretty good there is that they lined up offsides. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. That's a five yard penalty from the previous spot. First down, Southern Mississippi. Referee Gordy Reese of the Pac 10. And Jeff Bauer's been all over these officials. I'm not sure what it's about. Maybe he's just working them, trying to get a call, and you just never know how that stuff's going to work, whether it'll work for you or against you. But nonetheless, that's, that's what Jeff's been doing. He's had some advice almost every series. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Ray Holcraft almost had him for a sack and finally puts the Spencer Tune over near the sideline to knock him down. And let's uh, hear what Reese Davis and company have in store for us coming up at the half. All right, Dave, in the Dodge Halftime Report, Trev Alberts, Mark May will join me. The Big Ten not exactly ringing out 03 in fine fashion. But the Big Ten could be helped by Michigan. We'll look ahead at the Rose Bowl, Mark. And Bill Callahan, the head coach of the Oakland Raiders, was let go today. Maybe he'll go to the collegiate level, maybe someplace in the Midwest. What? Trev's been trying to hire a coach. Maybe he's found him. No, I don't think so. Almond on second down and 10. Almost intercepted right in the hands 
and through the hands of Josh Savage. First team all Mountain West Conference defensive end who would have scored had he held on to that one. Yeah, but if you take a big guy like Josh, he's a defensive end, he's normally a pass rusher. He drops here and is his own blitz, and that's exactly why it confused Dustin Allman. Threw the ball right to him, and Josh, you did a nice job of batting it down, son. Your teammates will say those hands ought to be on the clock. They give him a lot of credit for turning around their season with a speech in the locker room at Texas A&M. That was still a loss early in the season, but set their minds right for the rest of the year. Another flag down incomplete for Young. They also had him back down in a three-point stance rushing the passer that time. Another offsides defense. We talk about things that are basic fundamentals. Defensive linemen watch the football, get lined up properly. They work on this stuff every day. Still third down. But you get in a bowl game and the guys get excited and they get rip snorting a little bit and the defenses are having their way with the offenses and you just start going away from your fundamentals and that's what's happening here to both defensive line both both sides of the ball so from right at midfield third and five it's picked up All terrible pass Kenneth Johnson wide open this is not the Dustin Allman that has started since that loss to Nebraska nothing close to his usual form Kenneth Johnson doing a good job of evading Parker's bump he goes right into that window the curl window is wide open it's hard to see what Allman's looking at very low kick by Johnson returnable Warren get a block he can't and driven back from the 16 yard line back to the studio in Reese Davis and we check in again on the Gophers and the Ducks in the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. 24-21 Ducks, and here comes the freshman Lawrence Maroney. And Glenn Mason's team is back on top. Minnesota already over 200 yards rushing through three quarters. Meanwhile, back in Memphis, Ute limping off Thomas Harrion, starting left guard. They're going to x-ray uh, Thomas, the senior from Fort Worth, out of Kilgore Junior College at halftime. Already had uh, been bothered by an ankle even before today. So the Utes up 7 to nothing from their 15 with time to add to it. A minute 44 in the half. Not with plays like that, however. Warfield hit for a loss. Alex Ray, Etrick Pruitt, the safeties combining for the tackle. This is dangerous field position for Utah and we've talked all day about the working knowledge of field position on behalf of both of these staffs and certainly Urban Meyer knows that this is tough territory and I would think that Southern Miss would want to use their timeouts here try to make Utah punt the ball out of the end zone. I would too. They have two. Utah's out of timeouts. Virtually equal field position. And a minute left in the half. Second and 13. Smith with the shovel. So much for the surprise element. Michael Bowley with the hit of the day. Go back to what Rod Davis told us. We want to turn this into a defensive football game. What you see in a lot of bowl games is high scoring. We want to be good tacklers. And except for the touchdown run that put the touchdown on the board by Brandon Warfield, that's exactly what Southern Mississippi is doing. That is a form tackle. Keep your head up, drive through the sternum, move your feet, knock the man backwards. Great job by Michael Bowley on Paris Warren. This is a lot of hours of work. Now this is a this is the old Utah shovel pass from back in the 50s. Lee Grosscup became famous for executing it when he was the Utah quarterback. Michael Bowley obviously, obviously watched the tape and he knew exactly what was coming. He just shadowed the back and met him in the hole. But Paris now, Warren. Lee Grosscup refuses to take credit for that. He says it goes way back before his Utah team in the 50s. He says maybe even Pop Warner and who knows. 
yep, earlier well, Lee, than that. Lee's right. just being honest about it, but they got credit for it, whether they invented yep. it or not. Actually, there's nothing new in football. You get those old football history books back there with Jock Sutherland and all those guys. They invented everything. Cell phones are new. Cell so phones. One thing new in football. Well, what does that have to do with football? And Sharpies. There's only one guy that had a Sharpie and one guy with a cell phone, and I refuse to say their name. Very difficult half for Dustin Allman with 47 seconds to go. So there is one timeout. If they can stop Utah on a third and 11, they might have a chance to end the half by getting on the board. Utah stays very conservative as Warfield gets only to the 20, and it'll be fourth and five from there. And here will come with 42 seconds the last other this timeout. That look on Urban Meyer's face is concerned because what Southern Mississippi's great punt return capacity gives them is flexibility here. They can either come after, try to block it and get something, or they can set up their return. They're over there working on the sideline, and Jeff Bauer has a plan for exactly this kind of situation. Well, if not for mistakes, and especially that fumble snap by Smith Utah might have a bigger lead that poor snap preventing a field goal try a very makeable kick was never attempted and so uh, Utah with their own problems one reason it's only seven to nothing always seems to happen though against the Tyrone Knicks defense yeah, you could call those unforced errors but when you're looking at all those different fronts and alignments it makes you think too much Come after Kovacovic and block it. But Utah with the recovery and a big return and fumbled at the 48 yard line. Also, there's a marker back at the line of scrimmage. That's right, because what, what, what happens here is first got to see what the penalty is. Morgan Scally picks up that block punt. It's going to be holding Utah. Well, if the if he picked it up behind the line of scrimmage, then he could legally advance it. And had he not fumbled it, it would have been a first down. If he picked it up beyond the line of scrimmage, it's simply a punt. Whether it's blocked or not, once the ball passes the line of scrimmage, it is a punt. As long as it's behind the line of scrimmage, it's a free football to be advanced by either team. Holding offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Still fourth down. Number 40, Tommy Hackenbrook, is the uh, guilty party. And I believe he's holding on number 28, Pruitt. Etric Pruitt. They certainly did bring it. You can see he's, he's at the goalpost right in here, and he's the one that is called for the holding. Pruitt, Pruitt gets, still blocks it. Still gets a piece of the football. So didn't hold nearly effectively enough. Now running from his own end zone and getting it off is Kavakovic. Marvin Young, dangerous return man. Another flag is down, and Young retreats and loses all the way back to midfield. The eighth best punt returner in the country. And uh, not surprisingly, Ben Moa down there. I guess he'll be in the band at halftime, too. The guy does everything well. Maybe you'll see him with Lou Rawls. Holding. Wow. Against the receiving team this time with 17 seconds. Both teams beset by carelessness with the hands. It's so easy when you're not used to your fundamentals. Instead of moving your feet and getting in front of people and blocking like you're supposed to, you grab cloth and hang on. And coaches don't like Holding that. by the receiving team during the kick. Ten yards from the end of the run. First down. A lot of penalties for one half. Especially a lot against Utah. So 17 seconds, neither team with a timeout. Seven to nothing, Utah. This is an interesting situation for Southern Mississippi, whether to try to get something here, because it's going to be 
points are going to be so hard to come by. I think they ought to line up and throw it in the end zone. Take a shot. They're at midfield. See what happens. If you get in at halftime and hopefully make some adjustments, get your blocking schemes down, and see if you can get the quarterbacks calmed down, throwing the football a little bit better. Because the receivers have been open. Protection has been there for both quarterbacks, and neither of them has been particularly sharp. They're going to be 55 yards away with 20 seconds to work with. And they're going to get three receivers on the left side. Maybe a Hail Mary of some yep. sort. Good. Big ball can get it off. And he has to throw it away. Well, Utah was able to get to him with three rushers, and there again, the protection just breaks, breaks down. Number 90, Siona Poha, Josh Savage. Josh back to doing that, which he does so well, which is to rush the passer. And that was a little dash package, meaning that the, the corner was sealed. The quarterback wheels out so that he's, in theory, able to set his feet and throw the ball deep. But that didn't happen because he had pressure. Time. Two receivers left side, one right. Maybe the last play of the half. Almond throws short to Harris at midfield, and with no timeouts, that will end the first half. And we've seen so many offense dominated bowl games. Well, here's a change of pace 77 total yards for the Utes. They lead. 64 total yards, 65 officially now for Southern Miss, 7 to nothing for Urban Myers Utes. He is with Heather Cox. Coach, what adjustments were you able to make offensively to get in rhythm in the second quarter? Well, our defense created a turnover. We're playing a, we're playing a good defense, a darn near a great defense. The thing that's killing us are those damn penalties. So we gotta we gotta take care of the ball. Uh, our quarterback got hit early and he got flustered. And he's a young quarterback still, so we got to settle him down and we'll be all right in the second half. Speaking of that nationally ranked defense, are they what you expected or more? Oh, no, they're, they're exactly. We were prepared. This is a fast team that plays uh, two, two different styles of defense, odd stack and a 4-3. And uh, we know exactly what we're getting into. This is a good team. Thanks for your time, Coach. Good luck. Dave? 7 to nothing. Utah leading Southern Miss in this battle of champions. For the Mountain West and Conference USA of the 45th annual Accent Liberty Bowl from Memphis to Reese, Trev, and Mark in the studio. All right, Dave, if championships are indeed won by defense, I believe we see why Southern Mississippi and Utah won their respective conferences. Glad to have you with us on the Dodge Halftime Report. You know, my two partners can often look at the same thing, look at it entirely differently. Uh, Mark, the first half, not much offense being generated. I'm looking at it, the glass half full. 142 yards total offense in this game combined for both teams. Seven total points and a tremendous amount of penalties. And you sit there watching this game and you're saying you're on the edge of your seat for something to happen. It's so exciting. If you look at the last games we've had the entire last couple of weeks on ESPN, lots of points, lots of excitements, great football. Some people sitting to my right might think this is great football. I myself is uh, just a little boring. What happened to you? What? What is wrong with you? I thought you were a football purist. I am. There is an art to playing defense. It can be a beautiful thing. Let it's me tell you what, if, if you call this an art, it's definitely not Picasso. It's such shallow thinking, Mark, to think that only offense can be artful. I mean, we've talked about Southern Miss's defense. We expected them to be terrific. How about Utah's defense? Kyle Whittingham, the defensive coordinator, put together a terrific game plan in this game. Southern Miss has 65 yards of total offense. Dustin Ullman can't get anything done. Constant pressure. I'm telling you, as a Football purist, this is beautiful to watch. Defense being played all over the field. I'm sorry, Mr. May, something has happened to you. Don't you just love it when two punters are the most important people <laughs> on the field play? They're field part of the position. team. They're on scholarship. <laughs> Trying to take care of the field position aspect. There is a highly ranked defense that is getting it handed to them right now. We'll talk about that in just a little bit when we continue on the Dodge Halftime Report. The Utes are up by seven at the break. This halftime report brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Only one man 
has been able to find the end zone in the first half of the Axel Liberty Bowl. It was Brandon Warfield, the Utes, on top by a count of 7 to nothing. Glad to have you with us on the Dodge Halftime Report. The Big Ten, big day for them. Yes, Off to is. a tough start, winless in the postseason. And we will start in the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl, where Minnesota trying to win in double figures oh, in for a season for the first time since 1905. The Oregon Ducks. You know what? That was some that was some orchestrated bouncing, even better than those Peabody Ducks in Memphis that Bill Curry likes so much. Kellen Clemens to Sammy Parker, 14-7 Ducks. Lawrence Maroney, the freshman, running well. Great job there, offensive line sealing the outside. But look at the vision by Maroney there. Gets back to the other side, the power of the stiff arm all the way out of bounds. Hey, remember, this is against the nation's 11th ranked rush defense. Minnesota's over 200 yards rushing on the day. That was Thomas Tepe with his third touchdown of the day. And Sammy Parker, over 150 yards receiving. That was his second touchdown catch. The Ducks back on top by three. Reverse! And again, it's Maroney coming around. 22 yards to the house. Minnesota up 28-24. Jared Siegel has just kicked a field goal. That's a one-point game. The Big Ten continues to look for its first postseason victory. Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl earlier today on ESPN. You know, I don't understand that. Your team's the Badgers. You shouldn't be killing them, making hats out of them. I understand this. That's Lee Evans. What a terrific catch. The concentration. Look at it again. Lee Evans just jumps up and makes a spectacular catch. Wisconsin got the two-point conversion to tie Auburn at 14. And then Jim Sorge. This is just a brilliant play by Carlos Rogers to knock it into the air. Will Herring with the pick. That sets up Ronnie Brown. A nice job of running around by spinning and getting into the end zone. Finish off the play. Auburn goes up 21 to 14. Here's the story of the game in my mind. Auburn just crunching Jim Sorge. You saw Reggie Tolmore getting back there first. Carlos Dansby with a big hit. Tommy Jackson, TJ Jackson recovered it. Cadillac goes in for the second time on the day. He had two touchdowns. Ronnie Brown had two touchdowns. Auburn. 28 to 14 for Tommy Tuberville. Jason Campbell was the MVP of the game, although Reggie Torbor had three and a half sacks. He's the guy who dominated the game. With all that happened with Tommy Tuberville this year, what a wonderful job he did of getting his team to focus and to play with a great deal of intensity. And rally him together. I, I think that was amazing for Tommy Tuberville. And I think what's key is, remember a few weeks back when the president of Auburn and the athletic director went behind his back and embarrassed him and flew into Louisville and tried to hire his former offensive coordinator, Bobby Petrino, to take his job? Well, it all fell to pieces. And guess who's still the head coach? Tommy Tuberville. And it's an outstanding job of getting his team ready to play today and swallowing his pride and going out on that football field and winning the football game. Looking towards the future, I think this is a huge step for Tommy Tuberville. We've talked about great individual performances, guys, in this bowl season. I'm not talking about the officials in this game. Once again, the ACC officials atrocious in their effort in terms of making calls. But Jason Campbell, a guy who's taken a lot of heat this whole season, an up and down season for him. Third and long. He didn't have a great game numbers wise, but third and long when they had to make a play. 51-yard pass to Jarris McIntyre. It then led him down to 21 to 14. It was a huge play in the game. Felt good. You talked about Tommy Tuberville. Mm -hmm. Felt very good for Jason Campbell being able to make that play when he had to. It was a beautiful throw. That play you were talking about <clears throat> totally changed the momentum. Wisconsin yes. had grabbed the momentum and Campbell seized it back for Auburn and they are the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl champion. We will continue on the Dodge Halftime Report. We've got a defensive struggle going in Memphis, Utah on top of Southern Mississippi. 7-0. We're at halftime of the Axel Liberty Bowl. You'll get a chance to hear Lou Rawls. Got a little taste of it when he talked with Heather Cox. We'll hear some of Lou Rawls' halftime performance in just a little while. We're a day away from seeing the performance for the national championship, at least half of it, for number one USC against Michigan in the Rose Bowl, presented by City. Michigan, if anyone does on defense, you would think has the, off, uh, the defensive athletes to match up with the SC offense. Well, that's the whole story, USC's offense. We've talked about it. What makes USC's offense good? I think there's really four things. When you look at Norm Chow's offense, number one is ball handling. Here's Matt Leiner, the quarterback. Look here, three linebackers of Auburn as they suck up. Little play fake here. Matt Leiner then will go to the outside just because of that great ball handling. Look at the separation, guys, between the tight end and the closest linebacker. And here, just beautiful run, easy throw and so it's a huge game for him. Now, not only that, here at Trips Formation, Kerry Colbert creating matchup, mismatches for this offense. Here you have Kerry Colbert matched up against a linebacker. I don't care who linebacker you are in the country, you're not going to be able to care to cover a wide receiver like that. Easy touchdown USC. Then, solid play design. I guess this is Arizona, bad defense all year. 
But this offense, you get the inside receiver go inside. You get the two safety to suck up on the inside receiver. And then you get your one-to-one -one matchup on the outside. Here's Mike Williams and Matt Liner. Easy throw. Line of vision is right there. It's an easy touchdown for this offense. Then again, not just in the passing game, Mark. You'll love this. It's run blocking. Look at this offense here. You invite an aggressive Washington State defense and their defensive line up the field. You let the linemen get down the field to the second level and the linebackers and defensive backs. Little pitch out to your speed guy, Herschel Dennis. He has the ability with the speed to get on the outside. That's what makes this offense so good. We've talked about Michigan's defense. Very difficult, Mark, to match up against this USC offense. Well, I think the Michigan secondary matches up fairly well. If you look at Mike Williams on the offense of USC, very difficult to stop. But the Michigan defense is the best defense that I believe that USC will face. And not only the best defense, it's definitely the best secondary. Now, right here, you're going to take a look at Marlon Jackson, former quarterback who played a safety position, does a great job of reading the quarterback coming up with the interception. Then you have Jeremy Lesore, a cornerback for Michigan. I think right here, this is the strength of Michigan. This will be the best that USC's face. This is the power of Michigan. It'll be difficult to throw the ball against this defense. On the offensive side of the ball, John Navarro has finally matured into a good quarterback in the Big Ten. And if you look at the way that he can make plays down the field to play to Braylon Edwards and the other receivers, I think right now John Navarro has gone to the next level, and he is the leader of this football team for Michigan. As long as he keeps his cool in this football game, Protect, it, protect the football and not turn it over. Michigan has a chance against USC. And stay away from that rugby-style rollout punt yeah, that yes, ended up no. costing him the Iowa game, too. We will continue on the Dodge Halftime Report, not too far away from hearing from Lou Rawls. Terry Baker shakes off two tackles, glides 99 yards to a touchdown. Flutie under pressure, throwing for the corner, touchdown! Forty-five years ago, Penn State and Alabama met in the first Liberty Bowl, and a great American college football tradition was born. Over the past four and a half decades, many of the game's greatest players, coaches, and teams have become a part of the Liberty Bowl's rich history and legacy. Once again, Memphis is hosting this annual patriotic football celebration as top teams compete for national prominence in the birthplace of rock and roll and the home of the Blues. This is a milestone year in the history of the Liberty Bowl, and on behalf of the citizens of Memphis and Shelby County, we want to thank AXA for seven great years as title sponsor of the Liberty Bowl Football Classic. We've been proud to support the Liberty Bowl over the years. This bowl game represents one of the finest in all of college football, and the past seven years of partnership have been very rewarding. The arrival of the new year marks the beginning of a new era for the Liberty Bowl. One of America's great corporations, AutoZone, becomes the bowl's new title sponsor. AutoZone is one of Memphis' leading corporate citizens, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them and congratulate them for joining hands with one of Memphis and the nation's premier sporting events. AutoZone and the Liberty Bowl have been two great Memphis institutions for a very long time, and now we're bringing them together. AutoZone looks forward to continuing to build the AutoZone Liberty Bowl's national prominence over the coming years as the bowl continues to showcase Memphis and the life-saving work of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. St. Jude is a very special place for me. It saved my life. When I was nine years old, I was treated here for a disease called medulloblastoma, which is a malignant brain tumor. The doctors and nurses were with me every step of the way and helped me to get better. I had chemotherapy and radiation treatments and even had to go through rehab. Last year, I celebrated the end of my treatment with an off-chemo party. I'm proud to say I'm now cancer-free. Thank you, AXA, AutoZone, and Liberty Bowl for supporting St. Jude and helping kids like me win their battles. We are back in Memphis in a defense-dominated Axel Liberty Bowl being led by Utah 7 to nothing at halftime. 
Each year, the Liberty Bowl recognizes and an Liberty Bowl annually has one of the best halftime shows, and they featured the gentlemen that the Heather spoke with earlier. Lou Rawls and Memphis songwriting sensation David Porter, David Porter, as sung by Lou Rawls. And singing superstar, Mr. Lou Rawls. Here to sing just a few of David Porter's countless hits is international soul superstar, Lou Rawls. get set for the second half now there's only one obvious question for bill curry soul man or hold on i'm coming which is your favorite david porter song mm, I, I i think it'd be a dead heat but i just like Lou that's Rock. no answer but at I all i hear Pick those one. soul man how's that i would agree okay right. soul man duck master call it what you want to we got some defense <laughs> man we got some southern and western defense and i think Kyle Whittingham and the Mountain West Conference was anxious to come in here and show folks, hey, we play defense too. Tyrone Nix doing a great job as he always does with the Southern Mississippi defense. So we got a seven nothing defensive slug it out going here. Game track will show that. Utah Southern Miss is taking turns. With hit after hit, the only score, five yard run by Brandon Warfield. And there's 29 rushing yards by Southern Miss. And as we get set for the second half, let's get to some more news and notes from Reese back in the studio. All right, Dave, just a couple of notes to tell you about Bill Callahan. Of course, just a year ago, led the Oakland Raiders to the Super Bowl, and now he is finished. There was a big disconnect with the team. Callahan fired as a head coach in Oakland after several of the players saying, they really just didn't want to play for him anymore. And it appears that David Wells will no longer play for the New York Yankees. Wells is close to an agreement with the San Diego Padres. It would be a one-year deal. Padre general manager Kevin Towers being quoted as saying that Wells is the perfect big game pitcher for San Diego as they move into a new ballpark. And as always, like to update the Sonic Bowl Mania Challenge. <laughs> I thought that Rod Gilmore had been effectively eliminated. What happened to that? I don't know, but I'm still in front of you. That's all I can. <laughs> but one hey, point. Hey, it's back to I'm one point. I'm getting closer to the 100 mark, guys. <laughs> it's back to 13. I'm getting there. We don't like to give away the picks. Well, just let me tell you that the Axel Liberty Bowl is big for the head-to-head -head battle with Trev and me. Second half's coming. Boy, one time I was number two. I have fallen completely off the map. Bill, but you were never on the map. All I can say is that my team's really let me down. Time after time. Just, I'm deeply hurt. I never even got on the list. Jacob Metlock ready to get the second half underway. Starting with your alma mater. It went downhill North from Texas. there. Yep. Matlock. Driving that one. 
for a touchback and down below to Heather. Dave, I was able to catch up with Coach Bauer. He said offensively with just those 65 yards, we have got to win the line of scrimmage battle. He said we also must run more effectively. Defensively, he was very satisfied, except he said we've got to create more turnovers. He also expects to see a lot more play action out of Utah here in the second half, Dave. Well, they'll start from their own 20. First six, last six, there's no comparison. No, this and Southern Miss team looks like the first six games yeah, today. That second half of the season offense needs to show up when they next get the football. Keeping all the way and room up the middle for a first down is Alex Smith. What you see at the beginning of the second half is the capacity of staff to adjust. Obviously, Mike Sanford saw something in the quarterback read there. They popped it up the middle, got a good blocker. Tavo DePola and Rod Davis. If you don't block Rod Davis, you don't run much up the middle. And another thing, it calms down the young quarterback to, to let him run with the football before he throws it. Both quarterbacks have been rattled the entire first half. This probably has a, a eerie similarity for a Southern Miss fan to the Alabama game, and that's not a pleasant memory for them. Smith play fake. Hoisting one deep single coverage. Great adjustment, and it is caught by Savoy. 41 yards to the 28. Great job by Steve Savoy focusing on the football. Man coverage, which can be expected virtually all the time from Southern Miss. Corey Yates in perfect position. He just doesn't make the play on the football. Defensive back's job, once he locates the ball, is to get his feet settled, get up in the air, and intercept the ball or tip it away at its highest point. Yates could not get that done. Redshirt freshman Savoy, their best deep threat, 16 yards per catch, seven touchdowns, both best on the Utah offense this year. Back to the air and overthrown intended for Paris Warren. The Southern Miss defense against Alabama. Check these numbers. Alabama, three of seven through the air for 12 yards. That's what Tyrone Nix's defense did to Alabama's offense. Alabama won the game 17-3. to That's how imbalanced Southern Miss was in their first six games. Yeah, they will not win this game if they don't generate offense. And I still don't see the kind of poise and accuracy from Alex Smith. Neither of his first two throws were particularly good here, even though one of them was completed. Motion from Moa and whistles. Flags on the play. And flag. And this is a Pac-10 officiating crew. The referee is Gordy Reese. Before the snap. False start. Offense, five yards in the previous spot. Still second down. Southern Miss, 9 and 3, 8 0 in Conference USA. Their best win, 23 to 6 against a very good Memphis team. We saw one of the New Orleans goal, 31 to 10 at Houston. Another really good team lost in uh, the Hawaii and a triple overtime classic. 40 to 28 win against an undefeated top 10 TCU. One of the best wins in Southern Miss history. Six in a row coming in. Major struggles today. One field loud under by Rod Davis. He will track him down if it is at all possible. The all-time Conference USA leading tackler. One of the things Rod Davis does best is to get at the line of scrimmage and simply beat the offensive lineman across before the big guy can get on him. Time after time today, whether blitzing or playing down the line of scrimmage, it's been Rod Davis on the tackle. We have him unofficially for six tackles. Doesn't matter whether they're holding him, blocking him, grabbing him, he's going to be there. And most recently, this play through the A-gap between the guard and center for another loss. So third and 21. And again, whistles and flags. Yep, and Rod Davis was right there again with a little word of encouragement for Alex Smith, or some kind of word, anyhow. For the snap, full start offense. Five yards from the previous spot. 
until third down. You talk what you hope is that you can get your offense poised when they come out for the second half. Heather Rod Davis decided to pass up pro money and is probably going to, in the long run, work out really well for him. In fact, when we asked him how close was he to leaving, he said very close. In fact, before last year's bowl game, he said it was about 70-30 that I was going to leave, but then we lost. And he said, I didn't want to go out a loser. I felt like I was betraying my teammates. Plus, my mom wanted me to graduate. So he earned his business management degree in May, stayed his final year. January 4th, he heads to Florida to train for the Senior Bowl and see what happens with the NFL draft. Another flag as the throw on the run is caught inside the 30 by Warren for 16 of those 26 yards they needed. Tavo Topola, number 78, the big left tackle on Ronald Jones, having a hard time. It's going to be our 14th penalty total. Nine of them so far have been against Utah for 60 yards. Holding offense, 10 yards, previous spot, still third down. We get 10 for 70. A ton of flags to be this early in the third quarter. Look at the top of your screen, number 78. Sort of a chintzy call, but he did get a little cloth for a second. You could call those most every play. Sure, that's what Urban Meyer and his staff feel like. Well, remember when Utah had the ball on 28? That yeah, seemed like a long time ago. They're snapping it from their own 46 on third and 36. From their 46 to the 18, if they can, and they go conservative to Warfield. He's down at the 47. So again, what appears to be a great scoring opportunity turns into absolutely nothing. We've seen that over and over. Yeah, if it's possible for Southern Mississippi to turn up the defensive intensity, they've done it. They did have a bad series when they let the Brendan Warfield run through them down there at the five yard line for the touchdown. But other than that, they've been a typical Southern Mississippi defense. Utah playing just as well, maybe a little better. So Matt Kovacovic, junior from Oceanside, California. Had a punt blocked in the first half. But booms this one into the end zone. And a 47 yarder. Southern Miss will start at the 20 with 11.35 to go. Third quarter trailing seven to nothing. As we work toward the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Good luck, ma'am. From our 7 to nothing Acts of Liberty Bowl, more action tonight beginning at 7.30 Eastern on the ESPN. For some offenses, Arkansas and Missouri get together. The Main State Independence Bowl in Shreveport. The ESPN 2, 10.30 Colorado State, Boston College in the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowls. Capital One Bowl Week rolls on on ESPN and ESPN 2. Southern Miss has 64 total yards as they start from their 20. Almond on the roll and incomplete. Trying to hit Marvin Young on the sideline. That is the whole story for the Golden Eagles. Rip Shearer really needs to get with some variety in his offense. And that first play call was a perfect play call. Everything developed just as it should have. Marvin Young was wide open. The throw was perfect, and Marvin Young drops the ball on the sideline. Rip Shear, head coach here at Memphis. 1994 through 2000. This used to be his home field. Harris knocked back for a loss. And the Utah defense continues to control things between the tackles. And Steve Fafita, the nose guard in this case. The big guys up front. Offensive linemen for both Southern Mississippi and Utah have simply been whipped by their defensive counterparts today all day long. They haven't been able to get people on the linebackers. Third down, these two have combined to go one for 15. Have you ever seen that kind of futility? 
Maybe from one team, not from both. Not from both teams. Allman running out of time. And a flag down as he drives that one straight into the grass in front of him. Utah signaling they also come up with the ball as Marquez Ledbetter leads the charge. For the Utah, they do. But a marker back at the 21-yard line, remember. And Lewis Powell again coming up with it. The play stands. That is his second fumble recovery. There is no foul on the play. So Powell gets it for the Utes, and again, they're in great shape to add to the lead. Another excellent call by Kyle Whittingham here with a stunt up front. The tackle slips to the outside. Number 55, Marquez Ledbetter loops up in the middle, comes un untouched into the quarterback's face, and the ball goes on the ground. Oh, what? That really looked like intentional grounding. It, it did. It did. Let's see that again. I think we will see a forward pass that should be flagged for intentional grounding, not a fumble. Do about it now. 18 of Southern Miss Utah takes over. Problem on the snap. Big loss. Another flag. Smith twice at least has had problems on good snaps from Max Peterson. Both offenses, most notably both quarterbacks, really in total disarray. And both, obviously, both coaching staffs trying their best to get the young guys that are in their first bowl games. And they're just struggling to maintain their focus and concentration. Holy you, offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. Cannot imagine the pressure on these youngsters. Good an update from Reese Davis. But it is all about Reese Lloyd here, the Minnesota kicker against Oregon. Down two are the Gophers. Tommy Leather. High enough, long enough. This is the man who kicked the game winner to get the axe from Wisconsin. And he has won the Sun Bowl for Minnesota over the Ducks. Don't be celebrating. Finally, Big Ten, they're breaking through with the win. Smith, option, Warfield. Chased down, couldn't get away from Michael Bowling. Both coaching staffs pulling out every weapon in their arsenal. They're trying the bootlegs, they're trying the option plays, and the defenses seem to sniff everything before the fact. Now, let's look again. Is is the problem with the snap, or is the problem with Smith? Well, the problem is a little high, but Smith is taking his eye off the football. The quarterback shouldn't really have to focus directly on the football, but when you're struggling and you're not catching the ball cleanly, you look at it, catch it, and then go through your progression. Coaches are getting frustrated with the youngsters now. Third and 21. Second in Conference USA with 10 on the year coming in. Man coverage, everybody covered. Beautiful job by the secondary at Southern Mississippi. The ball was held too long, and Michael Bowley's going to get there when you hold it over 2.8 seconds against this defense. And not a big surprise that Smith has a slight limp as he heads back to the bench. One more red zone triumph with no score at all by this stout Southern Mississippi defense. So Kavakovich trying to hang this one inside the 15. Young returns out to the 25 and a 22 yard punt nets nine. That's all they get after that turnover. 8.25 in the third quarter is Capital One Bowl week. Moves into Memphis for a defense-dominated AXA Liberty Bowl. Southern Miss ball after a net of only nine on the punt at their 25. Now, the last time they had it, let's look at this again. Is this a fumble? Is it grounding? Or is it just an incomplete pass? That's a great angle to decide which of those three possibilities. What it, do you think? It looks like it's an incomplete pass. The guy's got a hold of his arm. He's trying to come forward with the ball. The ball is still in his hands. My guess is that the official rule that the ball came out before the arm started forward. Again, the Utes do nothing with the break. 
And again, Southern Miss will try to get something, anything, established on the offensive side of the ball. And they now go to Tim Blackwell for his first carry. He has had an up and down year. He's played seven games. He was suspended three games for violating team rules. Early, he was their top runner. And uh, has really kind of fallen by the wayside, been a forgotten man late in the year. Southern Miss, a couple of turnovers, four penalties, and only one of nine on third downs. And did not get anything on their lone field goal try. And so they're still midway through the third quarter looking at a shutout. So they change running backs. See if they can find a high hand. They get another sack instead. Yeah, this is a strong safety blitz. Dave Rebel. Dave Rebel, number 35. That's the kind of a thing a quarterback has to realize. He has to recognize that the free safety and the strong safety do not have blockers for them. And this has been a pattern all day long. People in his face when he didn't see them coming. There are times when it's not his responsibility, and there are times when he's supposed to see them. When a blitz comes out of the secondary, it's the quarterback's responsibility to see it coming and to have an answer. He simply never sees the strong safety rubber coming from his right side. Third and 14 are coming after him again, but there are whistles this time. When I say have an answer, now that means he either throws it hot delay again. or he Offense, goes to five yards to the previous spot. Still third down. Now a delay of game. He either throws it to a hot receiver who breaks off his route when he sees the strong safety blitz, or he changes the protection and brings a tight end in and gets some sort of maximum protection so that he's got enough blockers. These young quarterbacks have too much to think about, and that's their problem. And Sachs had not been a factor at all in the six-game win streak for Southern Miss. Two in those six games. Two already today. On the deep out, incomplete. Intended for Kenneth Johnson. And Sean Harper thought pick and six, and he almost came up with both. You want to see who's dominating this football game? It's the front people for both defenses. These big guys, Ledbetter, Pua, Fafita, and Savage up front for Utah have just taken over the football game and shut down the offense of Southern Miss on the other side of the ball. Those linebackers, Bowley, Davis, and company doing a great job for Southern Mississippi. They almost get Luke Johnson's punt. Warren will make sure the youth start in the Golden Eagles end of the field after a 37-yard effort. Well, that hasn't always meant much. All they've managed is a five-yard touchdown run by Brandon Warfield. 6.34 to go, a story of brotherly love and a lot more when we come back to Memphis. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 AXA Liberty Bowl. Presented by AXA. Your future, your way. And in part by Jeep. If it's not trail rated, it's not a Jeep 4x4. And by AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Tyro Nix's Southern Miss defense has held Utah to just 114 total yards, even though they trail seven to nothing. Finalist for the Frank Broyles Award that goes to the top assistant coach in the country. It's only part of the family story for the Nixons. Watch Utah to try to put it up against this man coverage. It's a good field position. 49 of the Golden Eagles. Fifth deep for Savoy in single coverage and incomplete. Can't cover any better than that. Greg Brooks understands man coverage, and this is nothing but fundamentals. Southern Mississippi, you put that receiver that's going deep on you on your outside hip, and you run with him. If you have a chance to locate the football, if do so. If not, fine. You can impede him with your body as long as you don't push him with your hands. Good job by Greg Brooks, number five. All-time leader for them, 47 passes broken up. That's 16 more than anyone they've ever had. First team All-Conference USA headed to the senior bowl. And they change quarterbacks. Fred Elliott had been warming up. I told you Morgan Scally did a lot of things. That's the first time he's been at QB in a while. 
That's a free safety. Fred Ellie warming up, but Smith stays in the game and scowling figures out a way to get involved. All right, what else do they have in store? Well, Tyrone's brother, Derek, a great running back, one of the best ever, in fact, in Southern Miss history. And uh, his career ended 12 yards shy of their all-time rushing record because of kidney problems that led eventually to a kidney transplant and the end of his playing career. Now helping out as an assistant on the defensive side of the ball. Another deep shot for Savoy incomplete. So Tyrone has helped his brother learn coaching and learn the defensive side after being a running back his entire career. And uh, it, it's a story that appears, Heather, to be on its way to ending happily for, for Derek. Indeed it does. In fact, Tyrone told me that the fact that Alonzo Mourning, the NBA star who has the exact same kidney ailment, when he said that he was forced to retire from the NBA, it really helped Derek accept his role more than anything else. In the back of Derek's mind, he always thought, if Zoe can do it, why can't I? Now he knows that he didn't give up, and seeing Zoe's decision helps validate his own. Really good putt by Kavakovich, fair caught by Young at the 12, 40 yards on the kick. Well, that Knicks family is just very special. They have another brother, an older brother, who contributed the kidney to Derek. I thought it was Tyrone, but that there's yet another brother who's contributed the kidney. Tyrone wasn't a match, but Tyrone, Derek, the entire Knicks family pulls together, and they are really an inspiration to the whole Southern Miss program. And he was a great running back. Oh, he was man. a lot oh, of fun. He was big time, big time. Player. So Southern Miss backed up deep on their own end, their own 12 as they start with 532 to go third quarter. And Allman on the option pitch. This is Blackwell again, who came in for the first time on the last series. Helmets crack as he gets six to seven. Morgan Scally, uh, fresh off his appearance as QB, <laughs> making a tackle. Thursday morning, Capital One Bull Week continuing here on ESPN. 11 a.m. Eastern, Outback Bowl from Tampa, Iowa, Florida. College game day built by Home Depot starts their coverage at 9.30 a.m. Eastern as the new year begins as Capital One Bowl Week continues. Blackwell gets eight, second and two. Before, stop me if you've heard this before. Whistles and flags. Stop. We, we've heard that. False start. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. I cannot tell Second you down. how frustrating this is for a coaching staff. And tempers begin to flare on the sidelines. You can see it on both these benches. Coaches getting in players' faces. Face coaches getting players maybe a little more agitated than they want to. So you get all these motion penalties and little things, stuff that your team hasn't done the entire second half of the season. Both offenses really struggling here. Six of the 20 drives for both teams combined have netted zero yards. Southern Miss's longest drive has gone 23 yards. All but again hit as he gets rid of it. Corey Dodds from strong side linebacker always around the ball. Has recovered four fumbles this year. One clinched the Colorado State victory. That's just a missed pickup. Wayne Hardy, the freshman running back, had responsibility for the backside and he simply didn't get there. Dustin Allman, not a happy camper at all. It's not fun to get hit in the back of the head when you're supposed to be max protected. So third down on the line again, the 23. Allman at last has some time and overthrows his man over the middle, Currington. There was a pass to be made and Allman couldn't come close. Both quarterbacks totally discombobulated. Are you thinking if you're Southern Miss now, Mickey D'Angelo, he has missed since an early season concussion against Memphis every game. He has completely given the job over to Dustin Allman since he had that injury. But with how little Allman is getting done, why not go to somebody else? Good deep kick here by Johnson. Warren dragged down with the ball loose and 
still loose at the 32 before Utah recovers it on its way out of bounds. The recovery for Utah by John Madsen of a 54-yard punt. Mickey D'Angelo is kind of a folk hero in Southern Mississippi, the starter each of the last two years, and this almost turned into a huge break for the Golden Eagles. Nine and two Utah, six and one in Mountain West plays some of their key games against Colorado State. Arnold Parker returns a fumble 80 yards for a score and a seven point win against Air Force. Spencer Toon blocks the game winning field goal attempt. And Ben Moa would end up throwing for the two point conversion pass. Matt Hansen's only catch of the year would win that one in triple overtime. In a blizzard at BYU, Brian Borison's 41 yard field goal, the only score in the game to break. BYU's all-time record, 361 games scoring streak. Warfield through the middle. That streak, Bill, went back to 1975. Brigham Young had scored in every game until a 3-0 Utah shutout to end this regular season. One of the most impressive records in college football history. Our game track shows Another big day for Rod Davis, their all-time tackling leader, up to 520 for his career and counting. And Alman and Smith have combined for 100 passing yards, 66 total yards for Southern Miss. That's it. 31 rushing, 35 passing. Not a whole lot more impressive for the Utes, 114 total. Way back inside the 15, Smith chases this snap. Now, you asked a question a while ago, is that the quarterback's fault or the center's fault? That's not hard there. That's Max Peterson. That's on the center. That ball shot out of there like it came out of a cannon. And it was the third time today that there had been a problem with the exchange. Neither of the first two were perfect, but that was impossible. One of the problems with the gun, when you start to get excited, tempers start to flare, adrenaline begins to pump, that gun snap can go on the ground or over the head. You even see it in the National Football League. An extremely fortunate bounce for Smith. And the Utes try to pick up their first third down conversion. Good luck when they need 29. 0 for 9. The defenses are actually gaining more yards than the offenses at every at every exchange, it seems. They run Warfield inside. This is just a game of get rid of the ball and play field position, and you're better off with your defense on the field than with your offense. Both teams seem to approach it that way. But that game track you just showed of this Utah team. They have been in all kinds of really tight games. Most recently, that three to nothing deal in a blizzard when they shut out BYU. As you say, it's the first time since 1975 BYU has been shut out. They're used to being in games like this. Southern Miss has been whipping people pretty handily in the second half of the season. Up at 60 degrees and perfect today. Can't blame this one on the weather. Kovacovic low putt. Big return possibility here for Young, one of the best in the country. Split it hard by Scally at the 45. Man, you have to lo love the way Young ran the ball and the way Scally tackled. There's a whole lot of hitting going on out there. If you like smash mouth football, we got it today. Holding again on number 40, it appears, Tommy Hockenbrook. Hackenbrook. And again on Pruitt, he's got a quick corner coming off the edge, and he must have grabbed cloth again. Let's see if they accept it or keep the ball where they got it. I think they ought to take the penalty and make them kick it again. That penalty is declined. First down, Southern Mississippi. I'd make them kick it again and see if I could get a big one on them. Because there's going to be a big play in the kicking game that's going to determine this game sooner or later. There it is to the left of your screen, right? There. You see Hackenbrook grabbing hold of Ettrick Pruitt. 
We've seen that earlier today. That looks like a replay. So Stallions that return by Young from the 43 something. This takes over. Back inside the Liberty Bowl, where I am joined by the third Knicks brother, Marcus, who gave the ultimate gift of life. You donated your kidney to your younger brother, Derek, about six months ago. First of all, how are you feeling? Feel fine. Feel great. Feel warm all over. Like we're going to win this ball game tonight. <laughs> Feel fine. How has the bond changed between the brothers since this happened six months ago? Well, it's kind of hard to say. We haven't really changed that much. And, uh, you know, we love each other. And, uh, He's got great respect for each other. We were just up in the stands. I was talking to your mom. She called you the hero of the family. Do you feel that way? I try not, I try not to think about it a whole lot. You know, I just let them tell me, and I, I just accept it. Well, I certainly know you're a hero in their minds. Thank you so much for the gift you've given everybody. Thank you. Hey, Atala. Hey, Gaston. <laughs> Atala and Gaston, Alabama. I was about to say, that's, that's two towns in Alabama, Atala and, Atala and Gadsden, where the uh, Knicks have lived. And while we were talking to Marcus, there was a big gain on a little swing screen to Tim Blackwell, number 23, who's kind of lit up this field. 12 yards. Allman with the option pitch. I wouldn't swear that wasn't forward. Yeah, it was forward, and fortunately, it was caught by Blackwell, and fortunately, he was still behind the line of scrimmage when he pitched it. So they have gone away from Anthony Harris, their leading rusher. They've gone to Blackwell, who spent three games suspended this year. Forgotten man. Yeah, this is not good execution of the option. You can't bob and weave there and then still pitch the ball. You've got to accelerate as a QB and make a decision quickly. That ball set out all of last year. Again, pressure comes on Allman, and again, he is dead to scratch. Ray Holcraft right up the middle from middle linebacker. When you sprint out on the corner, the man that you cannot account for is the middle linebacker. Ray Holcraft, number six, scrapes off his outside guy, his defensive end, and he's right in the quarterback's face. There's no blocker for him. Watch him come inside out. There he is, number six. Dustin Allman knows right now he's been had, and he gets on the ground. Full sprint, two blockers on the outside guy. Middle linebacker free. Another in an interminable series, it seems like, a third and long. 15 in this case, they blitz Allman again. He throws it away for dear life. And a late flag. Yeah, it looks like it might be on Allman, who lost his cool, Sione Puha, right there. understand how Dustin Allman would be frustrated but you can't let it get to the point where you're kicking the guy who's chasing you right in front of the officials well Dave you asked a question a while ago I never had a chance to answer about a quarterback personal change. foul offense 15 yards previous spot it will be a fourth down the fact that Mickey D'Angelo has been such a positive here, here we are Let's see if we can see what happens here. Bo Nagahi's clean there, and Allman just kicks at oh, wow. Bohuha. At that point, you have to pull it, don't you? He's getting so. nothing done for you. No, now he's lost leader. his cool. He's your leader. I think he has to come out. Angelo has to go in, especially since Angelo has kept his head in the football game and in the team. Allman is 7 for 23 for 49 yards. You should be thinking about pulling him regardless. And Warren almost turns it over at the 11-yard line. That's consecutive punts ending in fumbles on a 40-yard kick by Johnson. Well, he's fortunate he wasn't ejected because nothing was done to provoke him to kick somebody. And you just don't kick people on the football field no matter who you are. And assuming that the Southern Mississippi staff saw that, sometimes you don't see that till you watch the tape later. But Rip Shearer is very vigilant. He's sitting upstairs, and I feel sure he saw it. And he's got to do something because the leader has come unglued. Naga, he clean. Nearest guy happens to be Sione Buha, and Almond kicks him. That should be the last we see of Dustin Almond today. Maybe it will be. 104 to go, third quarter. Warfield. 
and get him a little breathing room. He gets about two yards. Now, the problem is Mickey D'Angelo has sat most of the year on the shelf since an early season concussion. He was a starter through the beginning of the year, has not played four games at all since the concussion, has not had much of a year even what he did play, 48% uh, or 481 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. He's warming up, though, and it's just something you have to do. It's, we're all human beings, and Dustin Allman's having a tough day. There's no way anybody could do worse. Not that you put it all on him. Obviously not all his fault, but he is getting absolutely nothing done. Warfield on another kid. Well, as I've said repeatedly through this whole thing, there are times when the linemen simply break down or your back misses a pickup and you get drilled. There are times when you as a quarterback are expected to recognize, especially with secondary pressure stunts, and both, all of the above, have happened to Southern Mississippi today. When we come back, it'll be third and long Utah, and maybe a new quarter will bring a new quarterback for Southern Miss. They still have nothing on the board and trail the Axe of Liberty Bowl seven to nothing. Capital One Bowl week in Memphis near the pyramid right on the Mississippi River and we ring out the old year with some ringing hits in the Axe of Liberty Bowl. That kind of day seven to nothing in the second half these two teams have combined for 31 total yards. 22 of those by the Utes who have a third and seven from their own 14. Time for Smith. He's going to keep. He's got a world of room. And a first down to the 30. One of the biggest gains of the day, 16 yards, the tackle by Alex Ray. And an advantage that Smith has, and his coaches were very forthright about this, he's a tough physical runner, even though he's a slightly built guy. He didn't hook slide. He ran, took on the tackler, and made a couple of extra yards at the end of that run. I think that loosens him up and makes him better able to sit in there and be a part of this football game and control himself. He was their leading rusher. They went at BYU with 55 yards. Their second leading rusher on the season. 410 five touchdowns coming in. Warfield. And the 32. Another tackle for Rod Davis. Rod Davis was out for a series, and we thought maybe that he'd been nicked, but clearly he's doing just fine. There he is with his 11th tackle unofficially. We got him four. Decided to stay in school, got his management degree, got a great senior year under his belt. Yeah, he's, records. he's really fun to talk to. He's a, he's a very engaging young man in addition to being a, a great player. Well, and a prophet. I mean, he called this, and he called some other bowl games. He said, we've seen all these high-scoring bowl games. That's about to end. The defenses are about to show up. Warfield, and the ankle tackle applied by Edrick Pruitt from free safety. Axel Liberty Bowl from Memphis, 45th edition. The game that uh, originated in Philadelphia. They played it one year in Atlantic City. Memphis ever since, and our game track shows not much in the way of total offense. And each team with three sacks. And a third and four. Keeping's been one of their best plays all day. Got him their last first down. This time looking to throw all the way. It's complete over the middle. Number 46 is Paris Warren. I really think when you're a real football player, the way Smith is, when you get a chance to take off and run and take on some tacklers, it just sort of settles you down. That's the first time he stood in there since about the middle of the first quarter and delivered the football on target. Nice job of making a nice read, finding the open man, and making the throw. Follow through, and a first down. Tenth in the nation in pass efficiency. This is what the Southern Miss defense has done to one of the better quarterbacks in the country. They start another possession with Warfield. 
Maybe a yard up the middle tackle by Michael Bowley. Mike Sanford and Urban Meyer told us we absolutely must make that quarterback zone read play go. Or the quarterback's reading the end man on the line of scrimmage, putting the ball in the tailback's stomach, and either pulling it or leaving it in there depending on what he sees. And they really have not had much success until now. Most of their second offense on this drive, and they have a second down and 10 after no game. Smith with the quick shot over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Steve Savoy. <laughs> Steve Savoy was not looking at the football, he was looking at that 24. Hey, that's Rod Davis, man. You realize, don't throw it in there. Boy, you look up and realize that Utah is looking for its second straight shutout. They've been in really tight games. You look at it, yeah, they, they had that three to nothing shutout. They also had 45-43 over Air Force. A third and 10. And Smith throws an interception just his third of the year. Alex Ray with the pick for the Golden Eagles. The team that had thrown the fewest interceptions in the country, just the fifth all year against the Utes. Best ratio in the country, along with Chance Mock of Texas, Smith, 15 touchdowns against two interceptions until this one by the rover Alex Ray the that's a three year starter yeah and that's a mistake on the route because Alex Ray was in man coverage his man took him into the route where the quarterback wanted to throw the ball he shouldn't have even been there D'Angelo is there he has come in at quarterback and Harris is back as the feature back after a couple of series of Tim Blackwell so after Allman is called for kicking at the defender Sione Oha and has gone 7 of 23 for 49 yards. The junior from Gulfport, Mickey D'Angelo, starter all of 2001, three games last year, and at the beginning of this year until a severe concussion basically ruined his season. He has thrown only 63 passes, not quite 500 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. And they go to him with absolutely nothing working on the offensive side of the ball. That incompletion for their leading receiver, Marvin Young. Second time tonight, Marvin Young's been hit right in the hands with a football, and it goes on the ground. It's just hard to imagine anything else that could go worse for Southern Mississippi on offense. Bill, they still don't have 80 yards in this game. No. 28 rushing, 49 passing. They average 334. That is not great. That's 92nd in the country. But it's not this. It's not this mess. 77 total. Over the middle and cut. And fighting for extra yards, Lawrence. He gets 12, and here comes a late flag. Deron Lawrence, former walk-on from Orlando. who was on uh, a scholarship known as the Kristen Bauer Endowed Scholarship, named for the late daughter of Dead head ball. coach Jeff Bauer. Personal foul, offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Southern Mississippi did make a first down, so it will be first and 10. Southern Mississippi. Boy, and you talk about a team that can't win for losing. They finally hit a decent play, and they go back 15. With Deron Lawrence across the middle, next really nice catch, hangs on to the football. Taken on the ground by Revel. Then he reaches up and pops him with his right hand. Listen, there may be some talking going on down there. Fine, you have to deal with that. That's part of football. You don't punch the guy and give away the gain you just made. As I said, it's hard to believe what else might go wrong on offense for Southern Mississippi, but then they came up with yet another way to um, short circuit themselves. Back to the 31, D'Angelo for Young incomplete. And another play. If you're counting, this will be our 19th penalty.
and defensive holding. It'll be the 11th Utah penalty. Holding defense. 10 yards in the previous spot. Automatic first down. You told Urban Meyer you're going to have 131 yards, seven points, with 10 and a half minutes to go. He would be thinking, gosh, what an embarrassing postseason this turns out for us. Instead, he's leading seven to nothing because of an incredibly dominating defensive performance. And they've overcome their own total now of 11 penalties. First down, 41. Harris looks for a cutback alley. Gets about seven or eight near midfield. This may be the the style that um, meant that um, Southern Mississippi is going to have to go with just come out and start running the football behind Parquet and Batiste. Nice job of knocking people back. Forced the free safety to make the play and it's second and two. Urban Meyer and Utah now working on a streak. Without allowing a point, better than 145 minutes dating to the second quarter against Wyoming. Again, they won 47 to 17. Three nothing at BYU. Start, start off five yards to the previous spot. Still second down. And seven to nothing here. You're watching these head coaches' faces. This is the kind of game you just detest because all the discipline that you preach and you work on, you get 14 to 16 practices in the bowl season, and you think you get these things handled. You just don't expect this kind of performance. Well, some teams take the month off or whatever it turns out to be and look much better in their bowl game. They benefit from all the practice. There are some that for whatever reason seem to lose whatever edge they end of the regular season with. The Angelo hit as he gets that one off incomplete. Ray Holcraft again. He's been busy coming, mostly untouched from middle linebacker. They have a Darrell Edwards, number 67, trying his best to pick him up. Not good enough. Holcraft just lightning quick. All of both middle linebackers just dominant in this football game. Both these teams trying to match the school record for wins. Southern Miss can win 10 for the third time. They won in 88, and again back in 52. Utah in 94 beat Arizona in the Freedom Bowl to finish 10 and 2, and number eight in the country that time. And number 25 here. Another set of flags before the snap with nine and a half minutes. Both offenses are so terribly rattled. Chris White. Full start, offense. Five yards to the previous spot. Still third down. Outstanding uh, left tackle, number 66, lurching before the ball is snapped. Studying frustration, trying to play offense in a game like this. Well, is there anything a coach can say that will mean more than the experience of an offensive player being dominated out there? I mean, what what positive words can overcome what's happened to the Southern Miss offense? Well, it has to come from within the team. Four man rush and batted down to the line of scrimmage by Josh Savage. On the other hand, if you're Trev Albert or any kind of defensive player anywhere, you love this kind of game. Hey, they can't block us. They can't stay in their stances when they're supposed to. We're tipping the ball. We're sacking the quarterback. We're nailing the tailback. We're forcing turnovers. This is fun, man. So there are a couple of ways to look at this kind of football. Savage overpowering Chris White that time. Here's the punt by Johnson to Warren. Backs up. Passes up the fair catch and a flag as he's knocked back to the seven-yard line. Kick went 50 yards. Seth Cumby may be the guilty party for Southern Miss. And if you count it, this would be penalty number 22. And if they're penalized for holding 
Ettrick Pruitt, which it looks like they may have been, it'll be the third penalty he's drawn today. That's like a good basketball defender. He's drawing the fouls. Holding Utah it is. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team during the kick. Half the distance the goal from the end of the kick. First down, Utah. Block in the back, it will be instead, and it will be from the seven yard line that the youth start. Look right in the middle of your screen. Just absolutely inexcusable. Arnold Parker, the outstanding corner, pushes Etrick Pruitt, the outstanding free safety, onto the ground from the rear. So Southern Miss has Utah right where they want him. They have the ball. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Heather Cox in Memphis. This is a real easy game to recap. A five-yard touchdown run by Brandon Warfield. And that's it for scoring. 97 total yards for Southern Miss, 10 penalties for almost as many. Only 131 total for the Utes and 12 penalties for 85 yards. They start from their own six with 9.17 to go. And Ben Moa lined up here at tight end. See him go in motion, see him in the backfield, see him flex out wide. Smith keeping, mostly what we've seen Ben Moa do is completely turn his life around. He was Ben Allison from Ogden, Utah, who was heavily involved in gangs. Utah had him, decided that uh, he wasn't ready for their program, went to junior college, was recruited back to Utah, got married, seemed to have left the gang lifestyle behind, but went to a wedding reception where a gang fight broke out. He tried to prevent it. He couldn't. He ended up with a bullet in his back, which he still carries. But what he does not carry are any of the other vestiges of that previous life. He has completely turned things positive for him, for his wife. And, and Heather, one of the best stories in college football this year for a guy who, uh, by all rights, shouldn't not only not be a player, maybe shouldn't even be alive. His turnaround has truly been an inspiration. In fact, Ben, as well as his coaches, really credit his wife, Christina, for being Ben's anchor. Christina's expecting their second child any day now. They already have a two-year-old son named Sioni, named after his grandfather. He also changed his surname, as you mentioned, to Moa, in honor of that same Samoan grandfather. Big weapon, but not many of the weapons have met much for the Utes today. They need three yards here to avoid kicking it from near their own goal line. Throw it down. And the pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Savoy open over the middle. And guess who? Rod Davis has done everything else today, so this time he bats the football. It would seem to me, with a big guy like Moa, and he has carried the ball. I mean, maybe you give it to him and let him run the football some and try to see if you can soften up this very difficult Southern Mississippi defense that way. Haven't seen him do that today. Did that against Air Force and scored a decisive touchdown. Tabakovic standing right at his goal line. Good kick. Marvin Young, fair catches it at the 42. A 45 yarder. 7.38 to go. Southern Miss with 97 total yards and still just one score, and we have a tie. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 AXA Liberty Bowl, presented by AXA. Your future, your way. And in part by Pontiac. Catch the Rose Bowl halftime show for the return of a legend. The 350 horsepower Pontiac GTO. And by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Conference USA has won five of the last six Liberty Bowls, so that's in jeopardy right now. Salute to those in uniform, saluted before our kickoff by Sybil Shepard singing the official songs of all 
four branches of the armed services. This is the second Liberty Bowl ever for Utah. 1964, they played in the Liberty Bowl game played in Atlantic City before it moved finally here to Memphis. And that game over West Virginia. Mickey D'Angelo in for his second series and barely avoids this sack. Every team has sort of an emergency offense. What are we going to do if we just can't make anything function? Both these teams have seemed to try just about everything, but it would seem to me that both of them have the capacity to run the football, and they have not really given it a chance to be brought to fruition. The big linemen are frustrated. They can come off the ball and hit somebody at worst. Passing look with three wides, but they run Harris. Warm out there and turns it up and look out. Harris tripped up inside the 20 by far the biggest play of the day for Southern Miss. 41 yards for a team that had totaled 36 on the ground and 97 for the game before this play. Big George Batiste and Jeremy Parquet, left guard and left tackle pull out get a nice seal on the inside so there's that normal pursuit inside out is simply not there the other thing that happens to a defense is you get a little careless and you, you go away from your running game fundamentals and if southern mississippi will stay with their running game they got a chance to make something happen here eric weddle prevented the touchdown and now southern missed timeout their first with 7 11 to play we've raved about how good these defenses are and they are but Utah gave up 3.9 yards per carry on the year. That's almost four yards a carry. So they're not invulnerable in the running game. Store today really hasn't changed. Defense. Smothering defense led by Rod Davis for Southern Miss. Ray Holcraft and smothers for the Utes. Running game, this is the only score. Five yards in the second quarter by Brandon Warfield for Utah. However, after that 41-yard burst by Anthony Harris, Southern Miss can seriously thinking, can think about tying the game with better than seven minutes still to go. We have a lot more to go on ESPN and ESPN2, Capital One Bowl Week action. Tonight, 7.30 Eastern, Arkansas and Missouri in the mainstay of Defenders Bowl. Three, four, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific from San Francisco. Colorado State, Boston College, the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Tenth straight winning season for Southern Miss. Jeff Bauer in his 13th year has become the dominant coach in Conference USA. And again, this league has won five of the last six Liberty Bowl matchups. Conference USA versus Mountain West champions. Anthony Harris turned back, leading the way along with Ray Holcraft, Corey Dodds. Southern Mississippi has not been a very good red zone team this year, although much better in the second half of the season. They only score 47% of the time touchdowns inside the 20. They score points 80% of the time. This is for the season. Defensively, Utah gives up points 85% of the time. The touchdown's only 60%, so those, those stats sort of match up. Second and 12, got that big run out of the passing. Look, they throw this time, but it's complete. Inside the 15 goes Currington, and they'll mark him out of bounds right at the 10. One way to deal with blitzing is rhythm passing, and this time, nice job by D'Angelo. He sets up one, two, three, four, five, and releases the football just before being hit. Currington does a nice job of breaking a tackle, leaping over the tackler, and taking it down inside the 10 yard line. Play the game right here, third and two. Two tight ends in the eye. Wayne Hardy is the fullback. Harris looks for the corner, can't get there. He's turned back by Parker at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the defense of stringing it out, not letting him get turned up the field, and the Arnold Parker 
doing his job coming up in contain and not only turning it back but making the play at the line of scrimmage essentially no gain I guess he even lost the yard here nice job by Parker but a good job by the big guys and the linebackers stringing it out Going to take another timeout before Jeff Bauer decides what to do here 554 to go the way their offense is played is there any hope they'll be down here again can you think, think about settling I think they have to go for it they have to go for the touchdown because as you say Dave the chances of getting back down here do not look very good you take your best shot whatever your best play is down here if it's a fade route in the corner of the end zone one of your tall wide receivers and they certainly have some that are excellent Deron Lawrence is 6 3 he may be the guy or if you like the option or maybe if you have a little trickery down here a tailback pass or something of that sort that might be the thing to do bring the new gear in with Capital One Bowl week on ESPN at 11 a.m. Thursday morning Eastern Outback Bowl from Tampa Iowa Florida College game day built by Home Depot begins things at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Capital One Bowl week. Continuing I'm into 2004 on ESPN and ESPN2. I've been surprised we haven't seen more of the exotics. You have a Statue of Liberty. Why wouldn't you use it in a game like that? Well, this? the problem you have, especially in a situation like this, even when Utah used it to get down close, when they use the reverse, there's a risk because you're probably going to get pressure here. And those plays are not good against a pressure defense. You get nailed for big losses. So fourth and two after the second timeout taken by Southern Miss. Needing a touchdown to tie D'Angelo and the shotgun. And the roll and swarm at the 22. Never a prayer. You Dave Rebel on the safety blitz. You've got to throw the football. You know they're coming. They walk right up. They announce it to you. Here we come. You put it up. You give your receiver a chance to catch the ball in the end zone. If you're the blockers, you don't let them come up the gut. You make the outside rusher the only free rusher. That's the way the systems are schemed. Now remember, D'Angelo missed most of the season after a severe concussion earlier, and look at the hit he takes here. And this is supposed to be turn protection. Simply completely missed. Jim Hicks, the center, is supposed to step to the right and look to the left. Free safety was late coming, and he simply missed it. So Utah ball to 21 with 549. You'd say 549 to run out, but no possession has lasted anywhere near that long. Deep middle for Warren, caught! Harris Warren to the 30! And the Utes strike back with their biggest play of the day, 49 yards. This is brilliant play calling. You got Southern Mississippi a little bit on the ropes. Play action right here. You see the free safety step up. The receiver is already buying Paris Warren too fast. He's already open, and the throw is perfection. The free safety should have been back there deeper than the deepest, and he bit on the play action. What a nice throw, poised by Alex Smith in the clutch. Strong response after he threw just his third interception all season. Back to Warfield keeping. Lots of room. To the 15, 10 to the 5, and knocked out inside the 3 by Travis Coley. A gain of 27. Quickly down to Heather on the sideline. Well, Dave, give quarterback coach Dan Mullen an assist on that huge play. He moments ago gathered all three quarterbacks and said, I told you at the beginning of the season that one play could make a difference right now, and he pointed to his heart. Find it right here. It just takes one play, and guys, I think he got it. Yeah, except that he got two, Heather. He got the great throw down the middle, and now Smith breaks contain, pops out, runs down the sideline, and I point out again, he does not run out of bounds. He does not slide. He takes on the tackle. He's a physical player. About a third of the offense for the day on those last two snaps for the Utes. First and goal with the three. Mower in motion. And Warfield just 
shy of the goal line at the one. That was another ple clever play call. It was an unbalanced formation into the boundary to the right. And then motion in that direction. So there were four wide receivers over there, and you would think the quarterback's going to sprint. And instead, it was a handoff. Brandon Warfield has the only points of the day. A five yard run in the second quarter. Seven to nothing, 435 and counting the Axe of Liberty Bowl. We'll get to Sports Center when we're done here. Second and goal from the one with the offset eye. Warfield and this time hit behind the line. And they mark him for a loss probably on the two. Senior from Crockett, Texas, third leading rusher in the Mount West Conference. Two guys that need to be separated, although no flags are thrown here. There's a whole lot of hitting going on down here in those white shirts. Won the war, knocked the black shirts or the, or the red shirts back that time. The offensive line got absolutely no movement. Head coach sick about it. You're on the one, and now you're at the two. The Southern Miss defense, with opponents in the red zone this year, 38 times gave up only 12 touchdowns. 11 times gave up no points for the offense. Inside the 20, from just inside the two here. After the fifth, wide open, drops! Oh, that was a game clincher. And right through the hands of Matt Hansen, whose only catch this year was the two-point pass from Moa in the overtime that beat Air Force. It's not even an official catch. This would have been, and this probably would have officially ended the Liberty Bowl. Wow. <laughs> tough day offensively, and this is a tough angle for a right-footed kicker on the right hash. This is not a gimme kick here. Ryan Morrison attempting a 19-yard field goal. For 19 yards from that angle. This time, good snap and hold and kick. Brady Parkhurst in the first half had a very low snap. Kovacovic couldn't handle no problems here. And Utah, 10 to nothing, 3.24 to go in Memphis. Utah drives at 78 yards on five plays, the most impressive drive for either team by far today. They settled for the 19-yard field goal by Borson. And if you're Southern Miss, Bill, you have 135 total yards for the day, no points, and you need to score twice somehow in less than three and a half minutes. Well, in, in one sense, this actually takes the pressure off both the offensive staff and the team because you got to go two minutes. So whatever you've worked on in your two-minute drill, you got to make that work now if you want to win the game. We saw Allen rubbing his hands, maybe ready to come back in after the hit taken by D'Angelo at the end of the last possession. Jasper Falk on this return for the Golden Eagles to the 27-yard line. Let's check in on Mickey D'Angelo with Heather. Well, Dave, as you talked about, he did have a concussion earlier in the season. He has another concussion. What they're saying is that he actually bruised his neck and his spinal cord with his helmet on that fall. He will not return to action. His family has come down. They said he is alert. Uh, he definitely will not return, but it is uh, unknown at what point he'll be able to have full contact again, guys. His eyes were fluttering as he tried to get up. Junior from Gulfport, Mississippi. One of the most popular players in the recent history of their program. Back out. Dustin Allman, 7 of 23 for 49 yards, back in. Flags as they get the screen for some decent yardage to Tim Blackwell. Allman completes the number 23, Tim Blackwell. Looked like there that the uh, freshman free safety, Eric Weddle, was offside for Utah, number 32. Penalty will be declined. Offside defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. Nice play call. More of that in order for Southern Mississippi. And let's see if the young quarterback can regain his composure. Dustin Allman with all the pressure squarely on his shoulders again. Well, you look for any kind of bright spot on the day the Golden Eagles, there's simply nothing. Look at that list. You understand why they 
trail 10 to nothing despite the best efforts of their defense. Allman plenty of time. A strike and their best pass of the day to Antoine Currington. Good for 24 yards to the sophomore from Jasper, Alabama. We've been hard on Dustin Allman. He needs some help from his friends. He needs these receivers to catch these balls and to make runs. Catch the football on the dead run and keep right on truck and don't be looking for the ground. 32 of Utah. Allman throws that one away. One timeout for Southern Miss and 2.41 to go. Dustin Allman's day has been forgettable and it looked like it ended after that sack and that 15 yard penalty for kicking at Sione Uha. And when you do that, you deserve people to be hard on you, but you also deserve a chance to come back in the game and regain your composure and see if you can win it for your team. And that's what he's trying to do right now. A 50% passer during the year with 13 touchdowns, seven interceptions. We'll know it from his day to day. He can still maybe pull this thing out. Not impossible. Finally, a little something going on this drive. And another completion, making the first man miss. Extra yardage by Terrell Bruton. The first catch for the tight end today goes for 11 yards. Now that's what I'm talking about. Big Terrell Broden catches the football, makes the tackler miss, and then accelerates up the field for the first down. Josh Savage out there in the open field couldn't come down with the big fella. So they've reached the 21 of the Utes. Three wides, quick pass behind Antoine Currington. That would have been interesting because he has a step on Eric Weddle there. If he hits that on the dead run, uh, that's a touchdown. The throw was just a little off. Just have to hope that D'Angelo's injury is not serious and that, uh, of course, you know he'll get the best medical care. He cannot take any chances with those concussions. And they didn't. Well, it happened in the regular season. They sat him for a month plus just to make sure that uh, all the tests they could possibly run checked out. And you saw Broden leave his snap early, leave his uh, stance early before yeah. the snap. Just not not much poise by either offensive Ball unit. Start, uh, offense, five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. But so far in the game, you got to hand it to Utah because they've gotten just enough together to have a 10 point lead and to force this attempt at a comeback. After this, Sports Center on the bowl action for the day. Happy New Year for those coaches who still have jobs and even fewer today than yesterday. Alvin barely gets that one off. And here comes the flag. As expected. The rule says he has to be outside the tackles in order to throw the ball away without getting flagged for intentional grounding. So that will be the call. Mr. Josh Savage doing again what he does best, which is to rush the passer. Well, he had reached the 21 of Utah, but keep marching backward. Protection is actually pretty good here. Almon starts to panic and moves a little bit abruptly, and then when he feels Savage around his legs, he unloads the football from directly behind the, the center lining ground, spot. It's a offense. good call. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. It is a loss of down, and it is third down. Third down, line of game, the 11. And they snap it from the 34. Penalties about even. Disappointingly, neither team has played a clean game at all today. Flag after flag after flag since the opening kick. So on third and 23, the deep out is overthrown. Went for Kenneth Johnson, Southern Miss. Very likely down to their very last shot. His first meeting ever between the champion 
From Conference USA, the Golden Eagles and the Mountain West champions, the Utah Utes. Undisputed champions. Last time that happened, a league that no longer exists. Won by Utah back in 1957, the Skyline Conference. Precursor of the WAC. Precursor of Mountain West. Fourth and 23 now. Eight DBs for the Utes. Three-man rush. That needs plenty of time for Alma to uncork it to the end zone. A flutter ball. And it comes down incomplete. But it's all eight of those red jerseys are right around the ball. What a job by Kyle Whittingham and this Utah defense. Absolutely dominating defensive performance by the Utes. And trust me, they've practiced a little bit against the Hail Mary. There were enough of them down there and tipped the ball completely out of bounds so that it fell harmlessly. That was, a, that was a Southern Miss guy that got a hand on that. If he tries two hands, he might actually bring that one in. Yeah, well, that, those things happen, too, as we know. Now, Utah's going to have to make a first down here. They cannot run the clock out without making at least one first down. One Golden Eagle timeout. Should have been an easy Southern Miss recovery. It finally is their ball at the 48-yard line. Rod Davis is on it, but somebody was trying to pick it up, which was not very smart at all. You pick those things up when you're out in the flat by yourself. You don't pick them up when you're in traffic. You get knocked off of them in that case. And very fortunate for Southern Mississippi that they come up with a ball. Urban Meyer looking on in disbelief. You simply don't cough it up in that scenario. So new life for Southern Mississippi and plenty of time for two scores. Happens every week. Tackled by Rod Davis, stripped by Rod Davis. Here's an attempt to pick it. I still didn't get to see who tried to pick it up. Travis Coley, luckily for him, Southern Miss finally got it at the 48. And all the complete over the middle. That one's fumble. Recovered by Scully. Scully may take this one back. Morgan Scully, touchdown. A 74 yard return. What a way to put it away for Utah. Could it be any more fitting that the defense scores the clinching points in the Axe of Liberty Bowl? Well, it's sad to say that that would be the fitting end of anything, but with the performance we've seen by really both offenses, except for the one good drive by Utah, that's sort of been the standard for the day. The defense is setting the pace. 17 to nothing. Morgan Scally, an academic All-America, near four-point student, who played at BYU five days after knee surgery. He's had 39 days since then to rest up for what turns out to be the clinching play of the Axe of Liberty Bowl. Nice throw and catch again. Scally and Revel knock the ball out. Scally scoops it up and off he goes. Looks like one of their best pass plays of the day to Broughton if he just hangs on. 74 yards later, Morgan Scally and Utah would have a 17 nothing lead. Utah's gone since 1976 since their last academic All-America. Morgan Scally with a 3.95 GPA in communications. They've been a long time, too, probably since they've had as good a free safety as Morgan Scally. Yeah, and his, his point average is not as good as Alex Smith's. <laughs> Fisher DeBerry, longtime head coach at Air Force, that's the best free safety he has ever seen. Morgan Scully, who just returned Terrell Broden's fumble, 74 yards to make it 17 nothing Utah. That's a whole lot of free safeties. We're just talking about Fisher DeBerry, head coach out at Air Force, 21 years and very good one. Nick 
allowed to go out. Southern Miss with one timeout and a minute 36. And 208 total yards. So our Capital One players of the game. I think it would have to be a defender for Southern Miss, and it is. And it's Rod Davis for 14 tackles, their all-time leading tackler. Also caused a fumble. And Morgan Scally symbolizing what his Utah teammates have done. And he just capped it with that 74-yard return. Now, in a game like this, you have to go with defenders on both sides. Yep. And uh, Rod Davis also had a sack. And I know it's a disheartening way to finish your career, but what a great performance he's had. And what a fine job on defense Southern Mississippi did today. Utah was just a little better. Brandon Warfield, 91 yards and a touchdown on 27 carries. Best on offense for the Utes. A little swing pass dropped by Blackwell. Smith, just 8 of 19 through the air for 124 yards and an interception. So very little through the air offensively for Utah. Turnover's a big part of it. And this is what's kept Southern Miss briefly in the game. The fumble by Warfield. But the fumble by Broden ended their hopes. Blackwell, right at the first down marker. Down to a minute 20 and counting. Urban Meyer, when you talk about hot young names and coaching, yep. he's on the top of a lot of lists. He's 39, third year as a head coach, two years at Bowling Green, 17 wins. He brought the use of the first outright conference title since 1957, the Mountain West Coach of the Year, the Sporting News National Coach of the Year. Another loose ball recovered by Utah. Think about that now. The first outright conference title since 1957. No wonder people haven't heard of Utah. Now, Ron McBride had a wonderful run there, and he's a marvelous football coach, but this is quite a thing that uh, Urban Meyer could come in and have an impact with his field position thinking, and that certainly worked for them today since it was such a defensive struggle. So with that fumble recovery by Reza Williams, the scoreless streak for the Ute defense now up over 157 minutes. They're going to finish 2003 with back-to-back -back shutouts. Words never before associated really with just about any team that ever played in the WAC or the Mountain West for that matter. Well, it's been kind of a joke among coaches that the WAC didn't care anything about defense or the Mountain West. And, uh, and the coaches out there have taken offense to it, and they've worked hard defensively, and especially people like Kyle Whittingham. And you have to be happy for him after he dealt with the tragic death of his dad not too long ago. That uh, he's enjoying such success now. Along with his uh, rest of the, there he goes. He even got hurt today. Yeah, but luckily for Kyle, it's, it's not the usual 20 degrees in sleet right. in Memphis. Liberty time. It was a balmy 60. And a memorable win for the Utah defense, just enough from their offense to shut out Southern Mississippi. 17 to nothing, and number 25 Utah has matched its best record ever. Ten wins and two losses. And the victorious Urban Meyer is with Heather Cox. And Coach Meyer closes the chapter on an incredible first year. You got your first Gatorade bath as a Utah coach. Could you have scripted this year any better? No, this is, uh, and you know one thing about this whole year, this is not, I've been a part of those like dream seasons where no one gets hurt, you have no issues. We had some issues this year, and guys got hurt. We lost our best offensive lineman, and uh, someone always steps up. Morgan Scally and our defense played fantastic, and we made plays when we had to. On a night where your offense probably wasn't quite where you wanted it to be, how did you inspire your defense to pitch a shutout? Well, I think Coach Whittingham and our defense staff, that's where they play all year. And, and the thing that people have to understand, early in the year we had three starters back on defense. Now they're playing like Utah defense. They shut out our rivals, uh, and then they also beat, uh, you know, won the bowl game for us. Coach, congratulations on an incredible season. Thanks. Dave. Urban Meyer in the use 10 and 2 after a 17 0 win over Southern Miss in this battle of conference champions, the AXA Liberty Bowl. Coming up next, college game day scoreboard with Reese Davis, Trev, and Mark for Bill Curry, Heather Cox, our entire ESPN crew, Dave Barnett. So long from Memphis. Happy New Year. 
And let's send it back to Reese and College Game Day School Board. All right, David, it's going to be a happy new year for the Utes after taking home the Axel Liberty Bowl. As Dave mentioned, over 158 minutes now of shutout football for that Ute defense. This is the game in a nutshell. Southern Mississippi had a chance to get back in the game. They didn't have a play they believed in for fourth and one. I tell you what, this is some of the best defense I've seen in an awful long time. Absolutely loved it. This is how you play defense. The way, you know, we'd all heard about Southern Miss's defense and how good they were. And yeah, they played a good game. But Kyle Whittingham and this defense of Utah, unbelievable. The pressure they got time and time again. And normally, if you're an offense that has a defense that's attacking like that, you can throw screens, you can do draws, use your aggressive play against them. It didn't work. Absolutely phenomenal mark the play of this Utah defense. Well, I think what showed today was Urban Meyer as the head coach. And mm -hmm. you talk about a coach in his first year that goes out to Utah, had a tremendous career at Bowling Green, turned that program around. And now look what he's doing here. He has a complete football team. When you talk about Urban Meyer, you mentioned the offense, the spread offense, throwing the ball around. Well, this is a total football game. They didn't move the ball as well as they'd like to offensively, but they capitalized on Southern Miss's mistakes with special teams and tremendous defense. And if you're talking about a young coach with a hot name last year was Urban Meyer, he's a hot name today. Now, wasn't that beautiful, though, guys? Didn't you love that defense? That's how you do it, knocking quarterbacks out. Are you kidding me? Did you like the 25 penalties too, yes. to slow down the offenses as well? How about Urban Meyer as a play caller? Right after they stuff that fourth and one play, he goes up top. Deep. Big game. He, he really has a knack and a feel for when to pull the trigger yes, on those does. plays. We're going to move to Shreveport. Our bowl day just getting cranked up. The mainstay Independence Bowl. Missouri getting ready to take.